Yes, I can see by the title. I'm sure you already know what the show is about. And the reason why we're doing this show is because we had a conversation uh, a few days ago, for that matter. We were talking about Pan-Africanism. I'm sorry, (laughs) Pan-Africanism. And uh, the merits of it, the validity, validity of it, and whether or not it is true or whether or not it's a real ideal. And uh, I was speaking with Chef Rob, as well as Yashua and uh, Gigi. Now, I made my points, at least I tried to make my points, as well as uh, Mama's uh, boy as well. He was in on it, on it as well. Now, I tried to make my points, but Chef Rob continued to cut me off every time I made good points. When people do that, that means that they don't have good arguments to rebut what I'm saying. Instead, they just want to cut you off and they don't want you to get it out. Because once they get it out, then they have to admit, I'm wrong. I've been had. Uh, I've been uh, going about an ideology that's not real. It's fiction. Now, I like to come, I like to prove my case. Now, I have to keep in mind that I'm not here to bash Pan-Africanism or Africa. In fact, Black Americans shouldn't even be offended if I were to bash Africa in the first place. I know some of you are going to say, what is this guy talking about? But think about it. (laughs) That's not where you're from. Now, I know what you're all going to say. We all started out African, brother. That's where all humanity comes from. Okay, good and well, but we wouldn't be an African. And the reason why is because when humanity began, yeah, it's a technicality, but it's the truth. When humanity began, it wasn't called Africa. See, some of you guys like to get into where does the word God come from? Where does the word black come from? Where does the word Africa come from? People weren't African. When humanity began But again Once humanity spread out People were still black I know some of you will say Well they were Africans If they went to a land called Asia A land called Europe Lands called the Americas They're no longer African But they are still Black people Yeah you could say Still black people from Africa but they're not African and there is no African culture that's all poppycock that's all BS what you have uh, is an ideal from people searching from a common thread see here's the thing I'm not trying to bash I'm just trying to be real and I'm sure we've all gone through this as black Americans Uh, We grow up, we hear people say, hey, I'm Italian, I'm German, Puerto Rican, Jamaican, Irish, uh, Greek, what have you. Indian, Chinese, they all have a country that they can all go back to and point their origins before they got to the United States. I'm sure that all of us, like myself, have always said to ourselves, Damn, what do we have? What can we point back to? We don't know. Mounting evidence suggests that we are the Americans. I mean, that, 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 that's showing that, you know, some came from Africa. There's, there's no disputing that. But, and I don't even want to get into that because that's another situation for a whole bunch of other people. But I've always said that Black Americans are the only people in this country who can actually claim to be actual Americans with no ties to another land. And that's from the middle. We can't go back to uh, some other land or talk about another language that we spoke. Now, I know some might say the Gullah and all these people infringe areas of the country, but 
those are exceptions to the rule. That's not the norm in the vast majority of the United States. And as a matter of fact, since we're having this discussion, what I'll do is I'll keep everything to the eastern part of the United States for reference, because obviously most blacks come from the south, so we'll, we'll keep it like that. We won't talk about the West Coast and all that because those are migrants. We won't even talk about people coming from Mississippi, Alabama, because a lot of them sh- uh, shot straight up into Detroit and uh, Chicago and those places up in the Midwest. Now, we don't have a point of reference. We don't have a common lang- language or culture. If we did, it was taken from us. Others, now you have recent people who have the same type of history, Puerto Ricans, Jamaicans, Cubans, Caribbean peoples. They have the similar history, but when they're in this country, they can say, I'm from Haiti. I'm from Jamaica. I'm from Puerto Rico. I'm from Trinidad. So that's still a point of reference uh, from the United States. But of course, once you get into those countries, then they're in the same boat that we're in. We don't have a point of reference. From Jamaica, where do you go? Now, Jamaica, that's a name, that's a Native American name. I think Haiti is as well. So, you know, a lot of these Caribbean countries and a lot of these countries, you think uh, somebody just made up a name or it's black African name. No, those are Native American names. There is compelling evidence to me. I'm a high power skeptic. I'm telling you, you got to prove things to me front and back. But the drawings, the the descriptions in the Caribbean, I'm saying black people. So it's, it's, I mean, I'm not trying to promote one thing or the other, but I am saying that with all those black people there, I mean, it's definitely feasible that there were some black Native Americans there. I mean, that's clear. Because I think it's kind of funny how those in the Caribbean got wiped out. But those in the larger lands of South America and Mexico, Central America, they're still there for the most part. And they're there in large numbers. You got to think about how Mexican-type Native Americans or what they might call Mogoloa types, they reproduce heavy. So, uh, I mean... Apparently, it only takes a few to populate the entire Caribbean. So if those people were there and, and, and they weren't black, then they should have reproduced heavily in the Caribbean. That's just my two cents on that. So, you know, people have to think about these things. So, you know, a lot of people, they're going to uh, uh, try and... Um, they're going to try and, and, excuse me, they're going to try and argue Africa this and Africa as the focal point. Now, I used to listen to John Henry Clark a lot. His main thing, almost in a brainwashing sense, was to keep repeating Africa. Everything comes from Africa. And yeah, that's what he would always say. See, those things would kind of sear into my brain. Africa, Africa, uh, Africa. And I'm like, okay, Africa, I'm not dismissing what Africa did. And I'm not an Afrocentrist, but I do have to say Africa, yes, first civilization comes from Africa. Obviously, if the first man comes from Africa, the first civilization would come from Africa. You wouldn't have to wait until a white man appeared on the scene hundreds of thousands of years later to get civilization. Because if that were the case, then the blacks wouldn't have been able to survive to survive until the white man came. <laughs> if you had to wait for the white man, that only makes uh, sense right there. But again, when you're dealing with Mesopotamia, Babylon, Sumer, Assyria, these, these, these nations, this is what you have to understand. Matter of fact, Arabia as well, but Arabia wasn't really known in history like that as having much throughout history. But these were black people. Yes, it's clear that some 
invaders of some kind came through, white style. And another thing, too, when you look at history, you'll see that the mongoloid Asian was on the scene. For some reason, the white man suppresses this. I'm sure people are familiar with the uh, walking cane of King Tut. That's how African, Africans pronounce it, King Tut. Um, where they have the Nubian and the Asiatic on the walking cane. I'm sure you all looked at the Asiatic and said, damn, looks like a mongoloid Chinese type Asian to me, but I thought they weren't supposed to be on the scene. But they were on the scene. So, I mean, the chinky eyes must have come from someplace. I know a lot will say, hey, man, they come from the uh, African, which is possible. That's possible, but clearly that mongoloid was on the scene sometime. So, again, we're going to get into the pan-Africanism. And this is the nail in the coffin. You got to put an end to this theology, so to speak, because I think it's dangerous. And, and the reason I know a lot of people are like, I can't believe this guy is saying what he's saying, but I, I'm going to explain it. And I have to, because I'm tired of this because not again, you have that guy Mike call. He's supposed to be Ethiopian. He wanted people to stick with a certain part of Africa, so-called sub-Saharan Africa. Now, if you look at the pictures that's on the uh, BTR website, on the Talk Real Solutions page. I have said this. I said this when we had our conversation, not with Mike, but with uh, Chef Rob and Yashua. I said, what would you say if I told you that most of the Pan-African leaders and the early leaders of the first leaders of the independent nations of Africa had white wives? You would think that would put an end to the pan-African concept right there because you can't be pan-African and have a white wife. That does not compute. But these fanatics, and I'll say Yashua, he said it doesn't matter if they had white wives. Well, if it doesn't matter, why does pan-Africanism matter? That's the question. I mean, why would you claim to be Pan-Africanist and you have a white wife? You know, you're no longer Pan-African at that point. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it can't get any clearer. But see, when people deny this, then all of a sudden, they, they, they're lying. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it flat out. You're lying now. You can't defend this. Then in another conversation, you say, well... If Nate Parker has a, a white wife, he's an Uncle Tom. So, <laughs> I mean, you got to be consistent. You can't keep switching it up for this person or that person. And the same people might say, if you speak Spanish, you're not black. If you speak Arabic, you're not black. Uh, some people joke about my complexion. Oh, you're not really black. But yet, Somebody like Obama can have a white mother, and they say that's black. See, we're confused. We don't know what black is or what it should be. I can tell you what it's not. It's not Pan-African. That's a, uh, I'm about to get into the origins of that. It's, a, it's largely a Caribbean and American slave concept. Like I said, people looking for a uh, history. This is what the Pan-African situation is all about. I'm going to get to the calls in a minute. But, because I know people are going to be ready for this one. But I, ha I had to do it, you know, because we have to make it clear because I'm tired of the hypocrisy. I mean, on the one hand, people are all into the blackness. They don't like people having black wives, uh, white wives and everything else, but yet they make exceptions to the rule for these pan-African, well, so-called pan-African African leaders. I have links in the description where you can go to the website yourself and you can see 
these cooned out uh, African leaders with their white wives. I mean, <laughs> and the funny part is the former Ethiopian le- uh, president you can see on the website, his uh, wife was black. I mean, she was amongst the, the more black looking ones. All the other ones have some white style mix, uh, crazy hairdos. And then let's not get into the Kwame and Kuma. I bring him up because whenever somebody talks Pan-Africanism, he is amongst the first names. He's like the, the god of it. But look at his wife. White Turk from Egypt. Turks were under the control of Egypt. Or should I say Turks controlled Egypt at the time. Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. Look it up. Turks. And that was his wife. He, he, I mean, keep in mind, this guy <laughs> was the leader of his own country. But he could have gotten his own wife from his own country. Which you would think that a, a leader would do. Well, Donald Trump didn't do it. But <laughs> uh, you would think he would do that, especially when it's supposed to be Pan-Africanism. Now, the proponents of Pan-Africanism, what they do is they say, well, she was from Egypt, so that's Pan-Africanism. No, <laughs> that doesn't count because people always say Arabs occupy Egypt and those aren't the real ones. So why do you make excuses for Kwame? Let's get real. See, it's because we're used to certain things. We don't want to say we got it wrong. We got our information secondhand from uh, African uh, Afrocentrists. Uh, just like when the Hebrews, they do their um, Bible reading on the uh, streets. Christians come up and say, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm a Christian. I know this Bible. Then the Hebrew Israelites, they start reading out of the Bible verbatim. Then the Christians challenge them. They say, no, you guys are haters. You're this, you're that. But if they're reading out of the Bible verbatim, then they go to another part of the Bible to explain what they said via the Bible. People start getting upset. They want to fight. Why? Because it's hard for people to admit I've been had. You know, I've been led astray. I thought that uh, what I was taught all these years, all my life, I thought thought it was real. I thought it was fact. People hate to be wrong. That's why some people resort to lying to prove their point. And, and you, you you can't do that. So if you look on that second link, They show Angola's first president and his wife, his proud white wife. See, this way, the blood, this is old school tactics from ancient times. Now, keep in mind, this is right after (laughs) European colonialism. So, again, we're on to another myth that Africans were fighting against the white man. Again, this is is why I'm not down with pan-Africanism, because Africans are not down with it. Africans are cooned out. I'm sorry. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but they're cooned out. They love the white man. They don't want to let him go. Angola's first president and his wife. Yeah, Portuguese, more likely, but she's still basically white. Senegalese president. Now, when you see the Senegalese, you're seeing the Moors. White woman. Botswana. Now, I'm sure you may have read that in the uh, sex and race. Uh, I think that was in uh, probably volume three or one or whatever, but J.A. Rogers pointed that out. And he's Jamaican too, by the way, I might add. Uh, He's technically a (laughs) pan-African in a way. So again, these Africans, Anwar Sadat, I put him in there. Now I know some of you might say, hey, 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 hey. Anwar Sadat, like his predecessor, Nasser. They weren't pan-Africanists. They were pan-Arabists. That's true. But since they're black, I decided to put them on, and they're from Africa. 
I decided to put them on the show there, White Wise. I mean, yeah, you could probably make the excuse that uh, Sadat took over a country that was previously ruled by the White Turks. So Nasser declared uh, Egypt to be an Arab nation, uh, no doubt prompted by the West and, and, and disseminated via the Turks who ruled all these so-called Arab countries because they all just switched up and became Arab countries without coups, mind you. And the, the Turks never went anywhere. Where are they getting these white wives from in a so-called Arab Egypt? The Turks, that's where they're getting them from. But anyways, bottom line is when they take these white wives and they, uh, the whites still have a vested interest in spies in these countries in a bloodline in these countries and he's cooned out Africans and that's what I say cooned out they take these white women because they don't like themselves either but they do like the power they like the perks and they figure if they take a Germanic woman or whatever type of woman they have that lady's uh, mother country will help them out and they love their mixed kids and they're not pan Africanists. That's what you have to understand. Now, before I take some calls, let me uh, go to Black Jesus Ministers' resource uh, for knowledge. You know, that is Wikipedia. And just read a little bit of this pan Africanism. <clears throat> they say it's a worldwide intellectual movement that aims to encourage and strengthen bonds of solidarity between all people of African descent. Based upon a common fate going back to the Atlantic slave trade, the movement extends beyond continental Africans with a substantial base amongst the African diaspora in the Caribbean and the United States. They didn't mention Latin America, I might add. Uh, And they didn't mention Africa, I might add. That's the slave descendants who believe that they come from Africa. It is based on the belief that unity is vital to the economic, social, and political progress and aims to unify and uplift people of African descent. How many times have you heard African-American or Black American leaders or scholars or master teachers say, if Africa falls, we fall? Well, let me say this. Africa already fell. (laughs) It needs to come up. That's what it needs to do. So we've already been down. They've been down. Now, I will say this. If Africa rises, then maybe we can rise. I'll say that. But Africa is not our glue because it's not like we speak some type of African language. And another sham that these guys have put on you is making you think that there's something called an African or an Africa culture, African culture or an African spirituality. These are all false. These are made up. I have to tell you again and again. Let me read on. It's based on the belief that, oh, well, I read that, the ideology, that's the key word they use, asserts that the fate of all African, people, African peoples and countries are intertwined. Yeah. <laughs> At its core, Pan-Africanism is a belief that African peoples, both on the continent and in the diaspora, share not merely a common history, but a common destiny. See, that's the ideological goal. That's the imaginary goal. But that's not true. That's not true. Even when you take African, let's say when the Moors were running the show, they didn't have that on their mind. They could have made, yeah, they had a little empire in Africa. I'll give them that. But I'm saying they could have made that a reality if that was what they wanted. But see, the Moors, they weren't necessarily about Africa. Their main concern was Islam and spreading Islam. But I'm sure that they knew that they were black and some were African, but you got to understand they were black Europeans. That, oh yeah, that's another thing I can't stand about pan-Africanism. 
they want you to believe that everybody who was black only comes from Africa or only was in Africa. The only time that somebody right outside of Africa could have been black was if they can document proof that somebody from Africa invaded Europe, uh, Arabia, or Sicily. That's the only time they'll accept that. They won't accept that these people invaded black land. That's another thing, too. They make it appear as if blacks or Africans do not invade each other for conquest. They make it appear as if once they see somebody else black, oh, well, they don't touch them. They don't touch them. That's blackness. Uh, We can't touch that. As Tyrone has pointed out, the Egyptians, they faced off with each other. They invaded each other. They killed each other. The Moors did the same thing. Carthage did the same thing. Hannibal, I mean, he was a ruthless killer. (laughs) I mean, you you can't deny that. The Nubians, everybody you can think of that's black or African, they invaded each other. So it also says the Organization of African Unity, now African Union, was established in 1963 to safeguard the sovereignty and territorial integrity of its member states to promote global relations within the framework of the United Nations. The African Union Commission has at its seat at its Ababa and Pan-African Parliament has its seat in Johannesburg and Madron. Now, before I move on, let me just say this. Uh, You have the OAU, the African Union. That's supposed to be about African unity, not pan-Africanism. The unity of African nations on the continent of Africa. And of course, Morocco is not one of those nations. For different reasons, they have a few with the Western Sahara. And are you aware, one time Morocco wanted to join the European European Union. Get that straight. And another thing, (laughs) there, if you look at a map of the Arab League, that should change your mind on Pan-Africanism. Because the outline of nations in Africa and the Arab League, they're greater than Arab nations in Asia. You can basically say East Africa and North Africa, those are the Arab League. So what's left? There is no Pan-Africanism. You got to stop this, man. And while I'm on this page, they they, they show Kwame Nkrumah, an icon of Pan-Africanism. But they never mention, all these people never mention his white wife. They never do that. That's why I mention it, because I like to focus on what people don't talk about. But let me take our first caller, and let's see what they're about and what they're going to drop, and if they're going to agree or or if they're going to try and... Educate me. So five one zero, you're on the air. Five one zero, you're on the air. Okay, we're gonna put him on back on mute. Unless I'm not hearing something. Let me go to the next one. Anonymous. You're on the air. Hello? Anonymous. Anonymous caller, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, I can hear I'm you. Sure. You're on air. Hi, I've been listening. I'm not exactly sure what your hypothesis or what your conclusion is. I, I, I'm not exactly sure where you're going with it. Um, okay, who's this? What is the, this is this lady. I'm not exactly sure. You, you said a lot. So what at the at the what is your bottom line in, in terms of this pan pan Africanism? Oh, the what bottom said, line is I mean, it, the bottom line is it's something that black people need to leave alone because it's ideological. It's not it's not real. Africans don't believe in pan Africanism. So if they don't believe in it, why should we? Again, the roots show that 
uh, it, it, Pan-Africanism is based on the former slaves of the Caribbean and the U.S. Not really, not so much Africa. Because, the, and the proof is, like I said, the first African leaders in the post-colonial African world took on white wives. So that right there does away with anything pan-Africanism right there. They're not pro-African right there. But a lot and of Americans, is, a lot of what Caribbean... Is pan, what does pan mean? What is, what is the meaning of the word pan? Oh, well, there was this character in the movies. Uh, like Peter Pan, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now, why would they call be... pan African? I'm not really sure... No, it's supposed to be a, a, a coming together, so to speak. You know, reaching uh, all, all peoples from uh, different spots. But that is not possible. It's all BS. All BS. Hmm. Hello. So you're saying because African people, Hello? African nations, don't believe in coming together, then. Should it be called pan black people from America? I mean, uh, I'm I, think be, I, I think it should be called uh, uh, nothing. That's what I think. <laughs> and because, you know, they, there's an African Union, and the African Union itself, like I just pointed out, about a third of it at, at least is comprised of the Arab League member states and a lot of these Arab League states in Africa weird part is I dialogue with people from Somalia a lot of people in Somalia they don't even realize that they're in the Arab League (laughs) don't you think that's kind of weird a little yeah so you know but they yeah just, just so the people know that that oh. pan is a pan and pan Africanism is a prefix and it means everything, like in common. Right. So that's what pan means in Pan African. Right. Right. Now that's 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 still false, and I'm sure you agree with me, Tyrone, uh, that this pan Africanism. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sitting back with my arms, man. You doing good? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, now you you put your piece in. They've been born with each other, and, um, you know, they have different, uh, I guess, forms of government. Um, So I don't know if they really embrace all Africans from the continent of Africa coming together or not. Probably not. You know, it's going to be hard for that to occur, just like it's hard for black people from this country and you can tell by the way people call in on the shows and how they act toward each other. There's no coming together. I agree. Uh, but the thing is, you I have to understand this pan African. I think it's a lofty goal. It's a lofty goal toward. But they've been right? working towards it for almost 100 years now. And uh, the only people who, whose goal it is are people from the Caribbean. In the U.S., not it's not the Africans' goal. I see. That's the key thing. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So you you understand? I got. I, it. I see these lines. These lines are lit up. People are ready to take me to school on this. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll go ahead and listen then. Hmm. <laughs> what All right, stand by. Let me. From? How did you well, we had a discussion. Topic? We had a discussion a few days ago with Chef Rob, Yashua, Mama's Boy, and Gigi, and we were talking about this. Chef Rob kept cutting me off, so I couldn't really explain myself. Every time I made good points, he would cut me off. So I figured I'd do a show and clarify things right now. Okay. Yeah, All right. Thank. Okay. All right. Thank you. Stand by. Let me try the five one zero one more time. Five one zero. 
five one zero. I hear a click, like you're trying to do something, but I don't hear you. Yeah, I heard another click. All right, I'm gonna let you get that together, and let me go to the other anonymous caller. All right, what's going on? You're on the air. What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? JMYC, what's going on? Um, it's not really much that I think I could touch on that. Like uh, Siron said, I think you're doing pretty much, uh, uh, I guess, breaking it down. Um, but I, I would say this, um, uh, like he said with Pan, I, I always thought when we were saying Pan-African, it would say Pan-African nation because P-A-N, right? So that's what I thought. Now, I mean, there's there's several ways of looking at this, too. Um, you have people that, like Mandela Khan, that was pushing this, but then he jumped on to something else. If we notice it, <laughs> we've been keeping track. He's definitely been uh, consistent with certain things, and he was saying Pan-African Nation all the time, right? Okay, and then he just switched, and he said, no, we're no longer part of this. I want to know why is that. That's a good, you know, that, that, that I'm very curious about that. But i say this, you know, I think that we also here start adopting certain things, um, build it and, and come with, I guess, from, uh, you know, what we think is an African perspective um, to a certain degree. But then how do we look at it when uh, uh, our, uh, our African brothers and sisters out there adopt some of the Caribbean um, ways, uh, uh, if you want to say, all Americanized uh, 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 of so-called African American, and then um, you know, in, in in that at the same time, um, you know, isn't it all stem from there in some way or some form uh, because of our brothers and sisters that's from the Caribbean um, that again, still adopt or adapt to different things as well as their island and kind of add their own element. I think that as, you know, in time and as, as we separated or came to different places and was put different places and generations uh, uh, continued, you know, uh, we would adapt or adopt uh, certain things from that land, whether it be, you know, because it was colonized um you know, or somebody else came with their mindset on certain things. But in some way, in some form, we uh, always adopted something from whatever place we was at at, uh, at the time, and it has continued. So almost, I don't want to say like watered down in a sense of, you know, from what it was originally to what it is now. But if you think about it, you know, uh, uh, even like the way the food is is, is created in, in, in some of these places where you start saying that even, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in some of these places where it originated, they adopt other things that came from uh, either the colonizers or other people that brought their flavor um, somewhere or so forth. So I think that, you know, if you want to say Pan-African, this is just my my, my opinion, is something that, yeah, you know, it is uh, kind of um, developed here from our perspective or, or Caribbean, uh, or if you want to say Afri- Afro-Caribbean uh, 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 perspective and put in our own, you know, uh, 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 feel to that and, and, and kind of, you know, how our vision or outlook on something that might not even be, you know, when you when you break it down, if you want to say. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Definitely uh, Caribbean manufactured and passed on to a lot of us. And, again, one of the godfathers of Pan-Africanism is uh, Marcus Garvey. And uh, when people speak on Pan-Africanism, they always make sure to mention Marcus Garvey because – he is the one that they look to as saying that he had a plan to take us back to Africa and uh, he almost did it. But they always leave out the fact that even though he almost took us to Africa, when that failed, the man didn't even want to take himself to Africa. <laughs> you know, if nothing else, you could have taken yourself to Africa. But no, he didn't want to do that. But instead, he came from Jamaica to the United States trying to tell black Americans 
trying to get us to go to Africa. Now, how come the man didn't try to take Jamaicans to Africa? That's a powerful question, if you ask me. Because he didn't have to come to the United States. He could have just stayed where he was. But, of course, he wouldn't have gotten much money in Jamaica. And I believe Jamaica was still uh, colonized by the British at that time. And so were most of the African countries, if not all of them at that time. So even if he could bring us to Africa, he wouldn't have brought us to an uh, independent African nation. Okay, you can say Liberia. But let's get real. I mean, look at Liberia is in shambles. But he wa- he wasn't going anywhere. Come on, let's get real. This is this- Marcus Garvey. We have to stop looking at that. Yeah, I'll say this: for the time period that it was in, what Garvey did and managed to do, it was remarkable. I'll give him that. But the end game was unrealistic. And if he felt that so strongly about it. He would have taken himself to Africa, if he, if he, even if he said, listen, I failed in bringing everybody else along with me. Hell, but I'm going. You know, how I many times have you uh, invited some friends out to go someplace? Everybody's like, yeah, we're going. And then for one reason or another, one person backs out. And then after a while, you're like, well, damn it, if they back out, hell, I'm still going. You know, because you believed in it. You wanted to do it. But he didn't believe in it because he didn't go. <laughs> but again I question Why he came to the United States Because I keep telling people Jamaicans they're not on our side Africans they're not on our side Jamaicans are still uh, I'll say They still worship the British man The white man You can look at their courts Same thing with a lot of, same thing with a lot of African countries as well They still worship the white man like I said, you see these pictures, these African leaders have these white wives. Think about it. When you get married, you want children. You don't just pick anybody. I mean, how many guys want a, a, a fat Chinese woman as a wife? Not to make fun of fat Chinese women, but I'm just saying. That's not going to be your prime choice. If you love your people like you say you do, or as other people Claim that you're supposed to love your people Because these people aren't necessarily Speaking for themselves You got other people speaking for These African leaders They tell us They tell us that they love Africa so much But if you do And Africa is first Or even your nation is first Then you will pick someone of your nation That makes sense If you don't Then that means you don't love your nation You're not pan-African Period. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jay. Stay by. Let's get to the 202. See what they have to say. What's up? 202. Hey, what's, what's up, going man? on? This is, uh, it's Greg, man. What's Uh-oh. up? Uh-oh. <laughs> no, no. Actually, 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 I, 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 really I actually, I, hold on. I actually enjoy your show today. To be honest, it's the first show you ever did that actually I kind of liked, to be honest. You know, you didn't ramble too long. You know, you kind of focus a little bit better. I've seen a pool, man. You know, so I'm giving you some positive feedback, all right? <laughs> but I want to say this, man, that, uh, I mean, we, we will have to maybe connect with out there at some point in the future. But, uh, but we're going to be more united here in America before we do that. And the other problem I see is that a, a, a lot of Africans are, are kind of, you know, they're more into tribalism. They identify more so with tribes, and I think that's going to be a problem. You know, their culture is more more of a tribes, and um, I don't know if we're going to be, be embraced in Africa as African Americans. I mean, Ghana, there's a few countries that do embrace us, but I'm not sure Black Americans are going to be all that welcome over there. Uh, I, I, I think I think that Africans are going to be more more. Uh, Apprehensive towards us. I mean, I'm just saying that we, but we need to connect with Africa, like the way Israel, like the Jews here in America, are connected with Israel and things like that. We have to have a connection with uh, Africa at some point because, I mean, let's face it, man. I mean, the white man's on his way down. He's slipping worldwide. This Trump election and the the, the uh, Brexit things 
in England. All that, if, if you really think about it hard, these white boys are slipping, man, and they know it. They're using up all the resources. There ain't shit left for them, man. China's kicking their ass all over the world, and they're, they're in Africa, too. Africa really is the last frontier, and uh, we have to get in there before these white boys and the Chinese take it over. So we're going to have to make some sort of connections with Africa. But I'm not sure Africans are going to want to deal with black Americans. Man. I really, I remember when I was in Germany, man, we'd buy dope off the Africans, and, and they would put poison in the shit, man, and try to kill your ass. I'm not so sure these motherfuckers have a lot of love for us, man. I'm just, that's, that's where I'm at. We're going to have to, we, we, we have to deal with the Africans, man. I mean, the Somalis are cool. The Ghanans are kind of cool. And the West Africans are kind of all right. And except the Nigerians, they're a little fucked up. But, yeah. I'm not sure those East Africans are with us, man, and the ones up north. And I don't know, man. It's just we got, we, we got some work to do. You know, that's all I'm trying to say. It's not as easy as you think it's going to be. We got, we have to put in the work right now. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of uh, the problem is you got people who call themselves the the prince of uh, Pan Africanism. Their ideal is to unite all of Africa and then unite the whole Black world. But what they call the black world Through their eyes See what they call the African world I call the black world But I don't stop at Certain people I gotta include the East Indians I don't care if they want to accept it or not East Indians Because there are East Indian? East Indian types Yes You mean the black there are East, East Indians. Indians Right Those okay. are the same black people right. Because there are people in the Indian world, so to speak, in Sri Lanka, uh, they do identify yeah. themselves as black. So Fiji too. You just can't. You know, even right, you even, can't, even though the Aborigines they identify themselves as black, even though they're more European, they call themselves black. Well, you know, they don't have anything to do with European. Yeah. Huh? Well, they're, they're they don't have anything to do with Europe. Huh? Well, no, they're not. What's that? Well, it's, no, it's, not. it's been debated. They're not. Well, I heard they are from Europe. Europe European. They're an African. Uh, they're you, you're introducing something new. I never heard that well, one before. Well, that's what I heard. Because a lot of them have, some of them have blonde hair and shit. Oh, well, look, man. Well, 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 that's that's well, that's yeah, they, go they ahead. Mix with the uh, Australian. Huh? The white people. What's that? They mix with the white uh, Germanic invaders. It's a, it's, it's, it, it's a theory. No one really knows. It's just a theory, bro. No. Well, you know what? The Australian um, Aborigines have been hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, listen, huh? Greg. There is a history yeah. of the Aborigines uh, being forced to breed with uh, Europeans. That that is documented, man. You need to check that out. That that's how they got their blonde hair. They didn't just um, naturally occur because it was like forced crossbreeding because they was trying. They was they were doing the same shit Hitler was doing to the Aborigines uh, with white people. So that that is documented, and everybody knows that history, man. Obviously, except for you. No, it's not that. It's just, what I'm trying to say is that, is that they aren't really sure about the Aborigines. But it's just really uncertain. No one really knows. That no one really no, knows. Sure. No, you don't. Oh, you don't know. No, you 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 don't know. Listen, listen, all this shit is a theory anyway. Okay, no one really knows what the fuck happened thirty, forty thousand years ago. It's all a theory. That's all it is. It's a theory. No yeah, one but really it's knows. a theory based on. But that, that wasn't thirty, forty thousand years huh? ago, Greg. I mean, that was like right. recent history. Let me reach the Aborigines, they've been on that goddamn continent for fucking thousands of fucking years, man. You know? I'm not oh, saying that they wasn't years. there, huh? but the the inbre- the mixed breeding and all that kind of stuff happened recently. No, no, no. The reason why I say it because they because there are some few Aborigines they found that have blonde hair and blue eyes. And, and you know, I ain't gonna argue with your dumb ass. Go ahead and say whatever you well, got to say. Well, what's what's really up, man? <laughs> what's what's your what's your the name calling, man? What kind of childish. Who you would, would stop doing that shit? It's irritating. It really is. But, but, the, but the point I'm trying to make is that they did find some aborigines with blonde hair and blue eyes, and they weren't sure of where the fuck it came from. And then they traced some aborigines from, like, from Europe. And they're like, they're not sure how they got there and shit like that. So, I never so, heard about that. Well, now, I know some people in the uh, South Pacific, huh? they may have blonde hair naturally, but that that's uh, an albinism gene that produces that. Look, no one really knows. It's all a fucking theory anyway, right? No, no, people theory? do know. <laughs> you say no one knows. Know. People do know because oh, they yeah. take DNA tests to find out the strains of the albinism for the blonde hair. Well, look to me, man. It's all a fucking theory. I don't really, I don't really. To be honest, man. Here, look here. here, here here's here's my take on things. I don't really put a whole lot of stock into what a lot of 
shit that's written by, by, by these white folks because they distort a lot of history. So I take a lot of history with a grain of salt. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. That's the way I've always... I've been skeptical of their history because because a lot of it has been debunked, a lot of it's untrue, and it's one-sided. I mean, so we have to you have to listen to their history, but you gotta you have to just listen. Read some of it with a half an ear. You have to be skeptical of everything you read, as far as anything from the media you watch on TV, any books you read. You need to be skeptical of all that shit. Everything you read, everything you watch on TV, everything. That's true. Yeah. But see, Greg, this is what you also have to understand. This is the, yeah. again the Pan Africanists. They have Africa on their mind, but people forget about uh, Micronesia, Polynesia, Australia, India. They're like Indonesia. They're, the natives of Indonesia are black, Philippines. All these people are black. Nobody ever says, hey, wait, how do all these black people get over there? Nobody ever asked that question. And the reason oh, why it, yeah. people don't ask because they were there. The white man well, how they get there? and the mongoloid man, those <laughs> are the ones you have to ask. How did they get there? See? <laughs> in Europe, people, I know it's hard for people to fathom that Europe was black. Because, but when you think about it, it's right across from Africa. I mean, the Spain is nine miles from Africa. Sicily. I mean, it's right there. Why wouldn't they be black? But of course, we're so used <laughs> to the white man's history in Europe. We can't think about these things, but when we see ancient history, think about this. How often do you see the history of Europe before Rome or Greece? They never tell you about anybody who existed before Rome or Greece. But people documented them. The Romans documented every tribe and every sector of every part of Europe. And they described them. Right. But how come we don't hold hear on, about on, them in history? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you're starting to get winded on me now. Okay? Shit. Now. That's not your show, man. Should, you got to keep up. Listen, don't listen, the cocaine listen, 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 your brain. I'll answer, I, I'll answer it, man. But I have a question. Why should the white man promote our history? He shouldn't do that. He's going to promote his own history and, and things he's done and his inventions and his greatness. That's what people do. We should promote our own history as black men and, 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 and indigenous people around the world. We shouldn't be sitting here bitching about what the white man's not promoting for us, things that we should be doing for ourselves. Well, so, that's not what well, I'm That's to interesting oh. you say that, Greg, because oh. every time we have oh. a Talk Real Solution show and we're talking about our history, you always call yeah. in and tell us how we're complaining. And now all of a sudden you want black people to promote our history. You you yeah. full of shit. <laughs> why? No, well, the, reason, the reason why I say that because because I, yeah, I, I have this friend of mine, she's just, Sister, she's always complaining about how come there are any sisters in magazines and on TV and all this shit. I'm like, well, why should a white man promote a black woman when he, when he you know, he shouldn't promote his own woman? I mean, isn't that isn't that logical? I mean, we need to be promoting our own sisters, in our, you know, in magazines and on TV, our own black women. We can't sit here and bitch about white folks not promoting us when we should be promoting our own selves. We should be. We should be having our own magazines, our own shows, promoting our black women, our beautiful black women. That's what we need to be doing as black men. We should have our own history, like Indians, man. I, I live around Pakistan as an Indian, these few mountain suburbs. They have their own schools, man. They go. They don't go to the white man's schools, most of them. They have their own goddamn school. They teach their own fucking history. The East Indian, you know, the dothead one. They're promoting their own history and their own culture. And we need to be doing the same thing. We need to quit reading them fucking books and white boys putting out here have our own fucking schools, promote our own history, talk about the shit we want to talk about, and we, that's what we need to be doing. We need to get this cracker out of our mind, quit reading his fucking books and all this bullshit he's reading about about this race and all this other shit, a lot of this bullshit anyway. I mean, we all walked out of Africa a million years ago and fucking, we're all from the same fucking people anyway. We all came out the same goddamn... But, but great, but the same world. Great. But Yeah, go ahead. Even huh? Africans, they get their history from the white man. That's that's why a lot of these African nations, they don't know their history before the white man came, or when the white man wants to cut off a certain point in time in their history, particularly West African nations, Nigeria. So you got to keep in mind the white man created these nations. These weren't naturally forming nations. So 
they have to take their history from the white man. Even well, Egypt. Because you know those aren't you know really what, man, the, 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 To be fair to the African nations, man. I mean, America's, what, 230 odd years old? And France is, what, French? I forgot when the French Revolution was, 1800s. I mean, these, these European countries, America, have been around 200, 300, 400 years, whatever, 500 years. India, I think, has been around for a while, their culture. Most of these African nations have only been in existence for 60 years. You know, that's all, man. I think Ghana was the first one, I think, West Africa. Ghana and then Kenya, these countries. South Africa, what, 20 years? You got to give these countries time to get the shit together. America, it took 200 fucking years, went through 11, 13 fucking wars for this, this country finally got its shit together as far as treating us right, women's rights, and all this other shit. These countries only been in existence for 60 fucking years, man. We can't look down. That's true, Gray, but check this point out. Out and say, check this out. I'll be, I'll be brief, say, I'll be brief, man. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll, goddammit. I'm getting and I'm not somebody on football. It's all to you. So you you're always, always on a roll, Greg. Roll the oh, Hold on. <laughs> Boy, now, check right. this out. People say the Asian countries, they were colonized as well. But look at them. They got this shit together. Now they're almost on par with the white men. Which one were colonized? What you mean? Which one was China? Uh, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia. Come on, all China, was not, China was not colonized. China was yeah. occupied. It's just different. They were not Man, colonized. Man, it was they, basically they, colonized. Yeah. They didn't have the whole no, thing, was, but it was colonized it was, enough. It was, no, it was it was occupied by the and Japanese, it and they, they it got China, their asses out of there. And, yeah, different thing. China wasn't just colonized occupied. by the British uh, either. The 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 Portuguese had pieces of it too. Well, France was occupied too. Uh, after you know uh, during World War Two, but they got the Germans out of there. Yeah, hey, come on, I mean, that's shit. a different I mean, story. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Come on. Huh? That's a different situation. I'm just trying to say, man. Look, colonization. America was colonized. Uh, South Africa was colonized. Ah, Australia, New on. Zealand was colonized. But yeah, uh, but what is what Israel yeah. is doing to Palestine is not right. You know, they you huh? know people uh, people are back and forth about that, and they say they won a war, but. What what the main point of things is is that they keep stretching that border. So is that colonization good? Because I don't think so. And I'll quant. Look, man, here's something else that a lot of black men need to understand, myself included. We look at these countries like Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, England. They're all the same. They're all white boys, man. They're all they're doing is spreading around the world. <laughs> these motherfuckers the same. Australia and England, New Zealand, the same shit, man. It's just white folks that are around the world, like they all work together, man. It's the same fucking shit, man. It ain't, it ain't, it, people seem to think these are different independent. These motherfuckers are all working together in cahoots, man. This right, right. I tell people, people that all the time about. because they're you know, on the all, office. All, all so the, the, you know, these niggas are so dumb. He doesn't realize this shit is worldwide. It isn't just America. You got well, see, Australia, this is what you got Ireland. Stuff. What? what they want to these do. motherfuckers they are all working together, man. I mean, I don't understand how. Well, so we got to, we got to. We've got to start spreading our brains a little bit as black men. We've got to start working with other African nations, uh, uh, no, other see, people that's around the world. We have to stop. Yeah, see? You have to stop worrying what? about Africa because we're not an independent nation. We don't have the import export capabilities, so we can't just say uh, we want to uh, have diplomatic uh, relations with an African country. We can't do that. We've got to get our shit together first. Then we can build with them if we want to build with them. They may not even want to build with us. I think they would. I, I think if you came at Africans as a serious person, because I'm a serious person, and, and I do business with white folks and shit, mm-hmm. I do business with Indians, and you, you come at them seriously, you know, I, let me tell you something, Alquan, man. <laughs> this is going to surprise you about about how to conduct business in the world. You only need three things to be successful out here as a black man. You need a good vocabulary. That's it. You don't need a fucking degree. What you, you need is a good vocabulary. You need drive, and you need some brains and balls. That's all you fucking need: some balls, some brains, and a good vocabulary, man. If you got those three things, man, you can be successful here in America. Well, now you're changing the narrative now. Yeah. Because uh, huh? when I speak with Africans, in particular West Africans, in particular, they don't yeah. want nothing to do with us. They just look at me with shock. Maybe. I admit, because I'm light, maybe they might be like, I don't know what the hell this guy is right now. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. So they may not think I'm one of their people Al-Kwan, or, Al-Kwan, or, or, or Al-Kwan, Yeah, but is that all, though? Is that Al-Kwan. all? Because a lot of it is perception from one side or another. 
you know, I don't think that all African brothers from a certain part are going to say, I'm not going to work with them. But them, some might have a perception of the African-American and vice versa. Or I'm not going to fuck with these Africans because this, this, this. But that's not that's a perception, and you're, you're generalizing everybody. I think that, I mean, you, you, you can't put everybody in a box. I'm just saying. That's right. You're right. He's right. Look, no, I hear look, you. Look, look, money talks, man. If you can put money in motherfuckers' pockets, They'll do business with your ass. <laughs> Africans, well, Indians, that's why China Pakistan, is doing what they're doing in Africa. Evil. It, it's <laughs> about, it's, you know, it, it, if a world people can make a, a dollar off your ass, they'll do business with you, man. It's the way it is. M- money talks. All right? So, all so right. there's shit about you all talking right. about, you can't, that's, that's, about, that's a, a bunch of bullshit. All it, right. It, Thanks it, a lot, Greg. Let me get to the next caller. All right. Let me get to this. Let me get to this. I'll listen. I'm, I'm, I'm get getting to the four one five. Uh, all right, let me get to the 415. Hey, peace, man. This is my life. What y'all doing, brother? Hey, what's going on? Oh, never mind. I heard y'all rambling on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pan-Africanism. Yeah, it, I mean, what can we say about Pan-Africanism? I think it's an idea that is misused in today's time. It was applicable back way when because... Pan African to me was time sensitive. I think we forget about brothers like Prince Hall, who was also uh, a Pan African abolitionist at one time. He told him, "Just give us boats and we'll go back home if y'all don't want us here." And it, it's been it, it was something that needed to be done in that time period when it was fresh. Uh, I think now people use it as a way to get money. You know, just throw a term out there that just sounds good, you know, for people to gravitate and latch on to. But, I mean, it's nothing serious about it. Because back then, like, you made the statement about Garvey, why he didn't go. I mean, I, I'm not bringing this up to make an argument against what you said, but it's just like in that time, you know, it was difficult to get the masses. And like you said, you know, it was money in America. But it, in that time, it was difficult to get the masses and be – somewhere else, whereas now times, these people that are so pan-African, they should be in Africa right now because they could live stream. I mean, the Internet (laughs) can do wonderful things. Like, if you really was about pan-Africanism, you need to be uh, showing me videos or talking to me from, like you said, from whatever continent you choose and whatever country or city you decide to go to. And, I mean, they're not really serious when they talk this pan-African stuff because, I mean, come on now, you – you don't. You can't tell us nothing about the people, the economy. Like, am I going to be able to get a job? Uh, how am I going to earn income? What skills are needed to survive there? You know, it, it's a lot of things. And, and then the other brother, I forgot his name, but he brought that that the, they're tribal, and that's a lot different from what we used to. And I think majority of the people that want to be Pan African, if they get involved in that tribal stuff, you know, I, I think they'll realize that they less African than, you know what I'm saying, they appear to be in the sense of mindset, <laughs> not phenotype. So it's a lot to Hey, I agree. Man, he, but, yeah, I, agree I just with keep you. it swift and clean like that. And, and, and let me tell you this, too. When you deal with tribalism, you're really dealing with nations. That's what tribes are, different nations. Right, Real nation, right. not country. And that's a whole different story when you're dealing with people and brothers up there. That's what a lot of them are involved in. And the politics over there is what you just said, tribalism. So, you know, I, I like what Mo Light had to say. At least he understands. Now let's get to the 314 and see what they have to say. 314, you're on air. Boy, I've been listening to you put out a lot of inaccurate information, Alcon. You should be ashamed. So, so you mean a lot of powerful information? No, it's not powerful. Now, but, but Piazza, you got to keep in mind, Trump, Donald Trump endorses what I say. That's what you got to keep in mind. <laughs> well, well, you know I'm right. Now. <laughs> first, you may mention about uh, Marcus Garvey. Why come he didn't do what he attempted to do here? There in Jamaica. And for a simple reason. But because it wouldn't work in Jamaica. 
the That's not a simple reason. The oppression that he received, that Jamaicans experienced, and Africans and other parts of the Caribbean, especially on the sugar plantation, was different than what they received here. And it, that difference is enough to bring about different ideologies and mindset. Matter of fact, Garvey got kind of ran out of Jamaica. And his idea of Pan-Africanism, he was not the uh, father of it. George uh, Martin, uh, Edward Wilmount Blyden was the father of Pan-Africanism. Blyden, he wrote that book, uh, Islam, Christianity, and the Negro Race. He, uh, he inspired not only Garvey, but also George Parrott Moore and uh and Krumer in Ghana. Did he uh inspire uh Nkrumah to uh get a white woman? And Krumah married an Egyptian married an Egyptian. White woman. And she wasn't white. She was a white woman. And uh Paul Kofi was also Pan Africanist. Matter of fact, he went to Liberia before the idea even became popular. The idea of going back to Liberia and Sierra Leone. Liberia was uh, in 1821, I think it was. Paul Kofi had a movement going back to Sierra Leone back in the 1700s, which they did set up business, had a trade back between the United States and Liberia. And built some enterprises. So uh, pan Africanism is an idea. It does play out today with uh, what you call ECOWAS, Economic Community of West African States. And before that, it was a SADC, which had to do with the but Southern. That's not pan Africanism, that's more of a regional organization. And I think Mo Light is right from what you just said. You said it worked out in the early days, just like Mo Light said. But it's nothing now. What I do is still there. They still have Pan-African conferences. They have them over in Ghana and from time to time. Well, they move around. Now, is that Pan-African you have an organization? Uh, as, in, as in nations or as in Pan-African as in including <coughs> Caribbean and, and Black Americans? Well, black Americans can go if they want to. It's not no uh, say, man, can't tremendous answer. effort uh, of black answer. Americans going. <laughs> Who uh, was it founded by? They used to go to the, uh, they used to have that, I was looking for some information here on this one organization that comes out of, oh, here it is, right? That does that. It's called the Center for Blacks and African Art and Civilization, CBAC. It's sponsored by Nigeria. And they had a big uh, conference here in St. Louis. I really enjoy going to their conference because they take everybody out lunch, dinner, and breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Took us on the casino and fed us. But they had conversations with Africans from all over the place Brazil and elsewhere. They had the conference here in St. Louis. and I think that the year before that, they was in Brazil. I don't know where they are today. So that idea is not lost. It still exists. Well, that's the thing. It's just an idea. It can never become a reality because, like I said, Pan-Africans don't believe in it. So so what, what, how would you describe it? If you see I would it in describe front of you it as, a, as, as what most sources describe it as, a Caribbean... An American thing, not so much no, as an uh, African it, thing. What would it look like in practice? Well, in practice, uh, according to what uh, proponents want, it would be African nations unified. They work with hand in hand with each other, and they involve people in the Caribbean nations as well as uh, Latin hand America. To hand. Work to hand to hand. How? Kind of like uh, the United States. Uh, the different states work together. 
in that type of sense. Hey, Alquan, you don't know what you're saying. Just submit it. No, it's you asked me a it. question on uh, how well, that's not it right. should work. It's all about I'm trying to economics, tell you how it economics work. and trade. That's all it was about. <clears throat> and it's a good idea. All about economics and trade is what it well, started if, off if, you, if that's what you say it was all about, then I have to say it was all about nothing. Because when it came out, Africa was colonized by the white man. Black people couldn't make a move. The Caribbean was still colonized by the white man. So it couldn't have been about economics and trade because the only one that was going to get the economics and the trade was the white man. Alquan, when whites was colonized, quote unquote, colonized Africa, African companies and business people were still doing independent trade. I don't know where you get these ideas that when a condition exists <laughs> in some places, it's, it's Tantamount to existing all over the place. That's just not true. If I don't know where you get the idea that a few companies represents the whole. I what mean, do you mean a few even companies? In, the only yeah, reason that in, Britain was the only reason that Britain was in those countries was for agriculture purposes because Britain doesn't have any agriculture industry much to speak of. They only got one growing season, maybe two. So it was about agriculture and agriculture products. The other well, no, activities about that these people trade, economics, and empire. So what were they That's trading what to? What were they? What were they trading back to Africa? It Britain, just go, per se. It, hey, they were uh, trading. They didn't have to trade anything to Africa because they owned the damn country. Well, you just <laughs> you just said it. They did not own the no, country. No trade. Tra- huh? Well, look, I ain't arguing with you no more. Now, what else on your table? It, no, that's it. You know, we just proved that the uh, pan African. Oh, and another thing, this thing about this thing about black. Yeah, you would be looked at as a Baruni in many African countries, <clears throat> especially the West African country where the word is used. And in every other country, they got a different meaning for the word. Uh, oh, believe but, me. Uh, no, and another thing, the word black is not used like you say it's used. I was at a Diop conference. In well, hold on. How did I say it was you? How do you say black is used? You're not using you oh, 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 disassociate the word. I was saying, you disassociate the term Africa, but they use the term Africa. Right, and but they I'm get just more saying, specific. I don't they talk Africa. about their country. I just use black because you can't if you if you use African then you, you count other people in Asia or Australia out of the mix. That's what I'm saying. Well, I can understand your use of it the way you have been introduced and influenced by the use of that word here in America. But in some places, among some people, when you call them black, they get kind of offensive. As I was saying, I was at a conference in Philadelphia called the Diop Conference. And one session, it was Africans arguing back in America on the use of calling them black. They said, we don't call ourselves black. And they was offended by it. What did they call themselves? They represent themselves nationality by their country, then by the ethnic group. See, that's another reason. That's That's another reason why you can't have Pan Africanism. See. All right. Thank you. you. Now let's get to. (laughs) Got to have some commonalities together. But let's get to the uh, man who wants. On behalf of Pan Africanism, the 302. I know you were. 302, you're in it. I'm sure oh, you yeah. were talking about. Of course not. Of oh, course yeah. Not. Okay, well, let me just say this. I, I know that you guys over here are a little slow, and I'm going to try to be slow in my delivery so that you can understand what I'm telling you. Because here's America. Play the map of the world out, and you see what the United States of America is imploding on itself in 2016. But yet, people who I've heard just a few minutes ago who was not African, and was your definition, Alquan, the terrible. With you and your little minions who were speaking, that that means that there is no chance for us to unite at home and abroad. Now, why did I say at home and abroad? The red, black, and green in 2017 is hooking this thing up no matter what the red, white, and blue 
did do the conquer and divide under colonialism. Now, y'all are neo-colonialists. In other words, Cecil the Lion or Harambe the Gorilla and their minions, their friends, their cohorts, they've been captured. And you guys here, you will take your children to see Great Adventure, the animal world, and Wild Kingdom. And here are the animals don't like no modern-day Tarzans. African internationalism is the call for 2017. For instance, the Asian Economic Pacific Corporation, that's Asia for the Asians. Europe for the Europeans, no. Europeans are African internationalists to the core. The problem that y'all have is that y'all are just nationalists under black nationalism in America. You know, we care about the blacks in America. We are only 1% of the population of the world at best. So when it comes to outside this country, if the United States of America is good for y'all, you Negroes can't say the United States of Africa because the white man's playbook won't let you say it. It won't spiritually or politically allow you to line up with it. But that was what the red, black, and green came over here 400 years ago. It was here to unite Africans at home and abroad. But first things first, that's the United States of Africa. And the ones who are going to form the United States of Africa, they're already there. They're already there. And the ones who are going to overturn the USA, the Union of South Africa, the United States of America, the ones who are going to overturn that is right here with the red, black, and green. And we're growing just like a snowball rolling down the side of a snow-covered hill. So African internationalism is the last stage of imperialism because neocolonialism means that the highest expression of democracy that's being denied by neocolonialists is self-determination. You guys don't have no self-determination orientation in your mentality because you got the white man's playbook. They're dividing up all the 54 nations of Africa while y'all got 54 states over here. But you don't have the capabilities or the qualifications to demand that the cross-border disputes of tribalism and all this terrorism in the continent where all the stuff, the loot, the spoils, the booty call is being sucked out like a vacuum cleaner well, y'all talking about, well, we need some black businesses in America. Okay? Now, suppose I say, well, I'm going to give all y'all a black business if y'all want one. Guess where you're going to get your products from? From the white man. Is that the white man's playbook? Right? The only time y'all go to Africa is to get some dashikis, take some uh, pictures with the pyramids, or to get you some shea butter or some statues to come back here and sell to the people. Other than that, y'all don't give a fuck about Africa. You, uh, you said to yourself, well, we need to get ourselves together right here. Well, I wouldn't give a damn about America. Why? Because when you lay the map of the world out, 99.9% of African people do not live in the United States of America. But yet as America explodes, implodes on herself, why do you think that all black people are hiding behind telephones, podiums, microphones, and televisions when even the young white people today, after the selection, after, never in the history of this country, they on their feet, out of their seat, and into the street, trying to shut them down. Shut them down. But no, not you, Negroes. You're trying to keep things just as they are because y'all want y'all little piece of pie out of this Titanic. But the Titanic is sinking fast, very fast, and there's not a goddamn thing anybody can do to save it. That's Uncle Sam. And the good thing about it is that when we overturn this thing, they're not going to be all black and they're not going to be all men. Isn't that an extraordinary revelation? The way you don't even want to believe your black or white lion eyes. Look at the streets all over this country right now. And it ain't even caught on yet. It ain't even caught on yet. The inauguration of the 20th of January is um, a couple months away. And a whole bunch of shit can happen in between there. But I told y'all about this day. You know, like, you know, Jay the Joker, he always said, well, look, this didn't happen this day. This didn't happen that day. Mandela, you was talking that shit, but this didn't happen. Don't believe your black line eyes right now if you see white people leading the charge to shut this goddamn nation down. Of course, that's not what y'all want to do because you got to keep getting what you get out of this. I know Lyron the Butcher, he don't like this here because I got his ass too. He did his DNA, you know. <laughs> but I, any Ku Klux Klan do his DNA, they'll commit suicide unless they submit to my way of life, because they, the Ku Klux Klan, will have to tell you from their own DNA that their original ancestors came from West Africa. Isn't that extraordinary? Ain't a nigga in this country that can do a DNA. I don't care if you call yourself in, indigenous or uh, more, Hebrew is like a Muslim or Christian. You do your goddamn DNA, 
and your DNA comes from West Africa as well. Why? Because that's where the human family started, in the equator, in the middle of that line. That was where the first chemical composites of human beings were formed. So I dare you, any of you to do a DNA. I don't have to do a DNA because I already know that I'm the son, son, S-U-N, of Mother Earth. I don't know that the moon, you know, the mother, the moon, that's right now peaking, showing y'all that the stars, the moons, and the, uh, everything is lined up. Now the celestial bodies on the ground under the red, black, and green is lined up right before your very eyes. And the confrontation is this. The little USA and the red, white, and blue is in full confrontation because the little USA is dying but not yet dead. But on the rise is Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. African internationalism is a way out of this. It will seal the deal and allow us to heal not really. those of us at home and abroad. There's not a goddamn thing anybody can do to stop it. Isn't that extraordinary? So you don't have African internationalism in Africa. Has to start there. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, here's where you're wrong, genius. Now, you mentioned the OAU. That was uh, Dr. Carmen Nkrumah. Now, I'm not talking about if you fuck white women and all that because all you niggas in this, in this country. You will suck the <laughs> shit out of white women's ass if you get a chance today. So don't start asking me <laughs> no question about uh, this one or that one. We're talking about African and excuses, though. Okay, now you see what the United States of Africa was formed at the OAU, and it was etched into international public records and public law not being enforced. After that was brought together during the Bandung Conference and during the OAU Conference, that was when white power went on a vicious attack through this Cold War shit, right? They really went on a real attack, and they had to try to pry Russia away from the African revolutionaries because Russia, not white people, Russia's not white. Russia always supported the African liberation struggle. And then China, China's the most feared nation on the planet Earth by the white man. If all the white nations got together and said they want to do something to China, China will fuck them up. Will fuck them all up. Every last one of them. You understand? They can feel 200 million soldiers. And they can shoot shit wherever they want to. And a white man or a woman on the planet can stop them. So what does that leave us? That gives us room to breathe. Room to reevaluate this situation. Room to come out of white power. Room to say, Uncle Sam, you know, you done really fucked up real bad this time. Because now you got a, a first lady who's a stripper. A first lady is not a woman after the 20th who will honor this woman, any woman that go to the pulpit, podium, telephone, and microphone, 99.9% of them, they don't want that as their standard of first lady shit. This woman, this woman, this woman, George Washington, George Bush, and the Barack Obama's woman. Now, those were so-called noble first ladies, even if they weren't noble, right? But the fact is, this is Donald Trump, Donald Duck, a perfect fucking executioner. And then he got his German wife, and she speaks about as much English as y'all speak Africans. If I said Imango es Angubu Yetu Lazima Tutashinda Balashaka, most of you niggas, y'all say I'm crazy the motherfucker. You wouldn't know I said, oh, goddess of all creation, we will conquer without a doubt. But now you got a first lady. She's going to have to have a motherfucking interpreter. Is that the uh, universal African language, uh, Mandela? Uh, absolutely. But I'm saying now you're going to have a first lady. <laughs> she's going to have to have her interpreter at the fucking podium when she talk, or she's going to have to have a Michelle Obama script when she opens up her motherfucking mouth. So, <laughs> y'all fuck up real bad. What? She claims that she speaks uh, five languages. Well, English is damn sure not one of them, all right? <laughs> so, <laughs> we know that. And for the first time in the history of the First Lady, y'all going to have a First Lady where all the First Ladies going to be scratching their goddamn heads and say, wow. That's why the white people was out in the streets saying, oh, fuck no, not on my watch. They said uh-uh, she's, not, ain't the, going uh, down like she's not the first um, foreign-born first lady, though. Listen, you can say what you want to say. I know that there were other first ladies who may have came through the back door, but this woman came straight through the door of sexual trade, straight, and straight through the door of high finance prostitution and even have sex with animals. That's what I know. And I'm not going <laughs> to do y'all's motherfucking homework for you, but I'm saying what I'm saying is altogether different than what you're saying. And you can't tell me ever a time after the vote was counted 
right after the vote for Kenneth, with Kenneth, people start going to the streets. That's extraordinary. Why? This ain't no Bush and Gore. This ain't no Bush and Gore shit. This is about ethics, morals, and dignity. Somebody got to see if we can keep our arms. So all you black people who behind the scenes, going to the church, mosques, and synagogues, to the imams, with the cardinals and bishops, the Hebrews are like more Christians, Jews, or gangbangers, whoever the fuck you are. Why are we getting ready to put a bunch of cranberry sauce running down our goddamn jaws and then going to go run around and play Santa Claus? And <laughs> this country's imploding because of us. The only reason it's imploding is because of us. But yet, we won't get out of our seat on our feet and into the streets and organize, organize collectively and break the tribalism and the bias between us. But you're going to do it whether you like it or not. Uh... Let me ask you this. Can you be a pan Africanist while having a white wife? You can be a United States citizen and have a white wife and you're anti African. You can be a pan Africanist and have a white wife and you're anti African. That's the way it is. Now, there are red ants, black okay. ants. So that's what you're saying. And white ants. So you're saying now, if you have a white wife and you're a pan Africanist, then you're anti African. That's what you're saying. Make no mistake about it. Everybody knows the most beautiful and most talented women on the planet is African women. Now, I'm going to use some analogy. That's why flies and all the animals are more smarter than us. Now, if a fucking ant is ants, now, a black ant wouldn't take his little baby ant to a white ant for a goddamn thing, not for no food, for no prayer, or no fucking, or nothing. You know, a black ant would never take this little... White what? Well, a black ant wouldn't take no their little black baby ants to no fucking red ants or any other ant. You know why? Yeah, I because the green they ones, are black ones, red ones. Well, well, I'll tell you what. You know what I'm talking about. There's a thing called natural selection, <laughs> and everything has a place. You know, even though lions will eat wildebeest and uh, topi, a topi <laughs> will still be with the topi. <laughs> you know, but the fucking lion has the what prey on the wildebeest and the topi. So we're the fucking prey because we like the white man's playbook. And until we like our own playbook, we got to follow Cecil. Cecil and Harambe, why do you think the fucking stingrays and everything is attacking the modern-day Tarzans? Because they don't like white people? You got damn right they don't like white people doing what they're doing to them. You know what? Of course, we love I like it. what you just said. I like what you just said. So you what? said clearly that if you have a white woman, you cannot be a pan-Africanist. I like that. So other people okay. need to take heed to what you just said. Okay. Well, I want to add to it because same with African internationalism, same with, I'm a, what you call it, uh, whatever the fuck y'all are in this country. Well, well, look, Mandela, you know, we're free. We can do everything we want. Yeah, now y'all can fuck each other in the ass too, right? So the good thing is that y'all have been uh, uh, played a Greek-Roman playbook to where you don't want to be who you are. You want to try to get in where you fit in. Because you think the boogeyman, Uncle Sam, going to break up your growth and development. But guess what? Nothing can stop our numbers. We're the most populous people on the planet. Chinese is number two. Indians are number three. And then down in South and Central America, they're number four. Do you know where the white man exists as it relates to numbers? Figures don't lie and lies don't figure. It's a mathematical equation on the planet Earth. Out of the seven and a half billion people, guess how many white people on the motherfucking planet Earth? A billion. Got to be around two billion. Shit, yeah, yeah, you keep thinking that. Like I said, the number one population is African people. There's 450 million African people south of Texas. South of Texas, 450 million south of Texas. Now, where are you getting these numbers from? Where are you getting them from? Do you know, you ever been in Salvador, Bahia, Rio de Janeiro? I heard of it. Okay. He now, counts them all. Me- We'll just check for Mexico, well, then, Bolivia, Peru, on, Colombia, Dominique. Wait, who was that? That just jumped in? <coughs> who was that? Oh, that was hey, my like, I said he counts them all. He actually counted everybody. Everybody, uh, Moorish, African American. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, South Texas. There's 450 million African. People, of course, y'all can't see it because you're talking about, well, there's 40 million of us in here in this country. You're locked in a little fucking box, and you ain't going nowhere because you can't put trade. Like this guy, Pianke, he might open up a business, but he has no boats and planes and tractor trailers and things. 
He has no dual citizenship, a dual economy, and a dual transportation system to hook Africans up with African international at home and abroad. That's the deal. And I'm not going to try to pretty this shit up for anybody. So anybody that want to divide themselves up and try to act like, well, this is where it all is in the United States of America, you are a minority of black people on the planet. And until you recognize that, everybody's going to hell together. Let, uh, black Blacks and Americans, you just can't America, Africa, United huh? States citizens. <laughs> what about the blacks in uh, Britain? If Britain. they was born there, they, if they was born there, the they UK citizens. But Alcorn, you was mentioning something about uh, if you marry somebody white, you can't be Pan African. So right. Teresa Carey, she's a, she was born in Africa. She's an African citizen, but she's not a Pan Africanist, is she? Is she? Well, if she wanted to be, she could be. So what's no, no, we can't I think you mixing? Was well, Marco? You're not part of that. You have to ask the people. <laughs> you're just standing on the outside throwing darts. Come on, you Nothing. know, you I know think damn what well you're doing. She's the of a uh, colonizer, so you know she wouldn't be pan Africanist anyway. If if Nkrumah was one of the founders of this movement, well, he he learned a lot from. Wilma Blyton, he had an Egyptian wife for political purposes or whatever he wanted to do. But here's what I think you're doing. you confusing <laughs> black nationalism with pan-Africanism. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Love is blind. But I'm not going to argue that with you because you're not a member of that and you need to talk to someone who is, and they would tell well, you. Well, we just got through speaking with uh, Mandela. He's, uh, he is, and he agreed with me. Even though I think he didn't that's, mean to agree with me, but he did. <laughs> I think that's a poor reference. I think love is blind. Man. <laughs> Not only poor, but dangerous. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm only dangerous because I know that y'all got the white man's playbook and y'all not African internationalists like the white man. The white man is African internationalist. How do you think he can name himself Mr. Goldstein, Mr. Silversmith, Mr. Rubenstein, Mr. Diamond? And his motherfucking name is Tchaikovsky and Javinowitz, right? How could uh, Negroes like y'all talk about, well, Mandela Khan, uh, the Africans named after Africa, Serpico Africanus. There was no white man named Serpico Africanus. That was what the Pope and the King of England named him <laughs> so that he could conquer West Africa, see? So ain't no fucking Mr. Diamond, Mr. Rubenstein, Mr. Goldstein, Mr. Silversmith, all them motherfuckers named themselves after my shit. Of course, that's not y'all sector. I understand y'all a little slow. And y'all got to keep the I white man I got to buy up. you a beer one day. <laughs> no, no, no. What you got to do, you got to organize some people to overturn the system, or else I have no need to see you. Or there is no system to overturn. Oh, right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. I agree with you. I agree with you. From where you are, that's what I'm talking about. You see? I'm with you. But when we do it, it's not going to be all black, and it's not going to be all men. And there's not a goddamn thing you can do to keep this thing the way you like to have it. You want to keep it as it is. That's what's wrong with you 40 million blacks in this country. Y'all want to keep it as it is. All right, let's see what the anonymous caller wants to add to this. What's going on? Yeah, what's up, man? This is a couple points. Well, I agree with Mandela Khan. I mean, (laughs) if I'm talking about politics in this country now, um, if you consider yourself a black American, African American, whatever you want to consider yourself, you're not out there protesting with these people, I'm just looking on TV. I see 95% white folk out there. Where's the black people who's going to march aside them? Just like protesting with the police brutality, that group, along with this group. I don't see a lot of them. And I, I'm just saying the politics as a whole, if you want to call yourself, like I said, label yourself anyway, but black, the politics is screwed up in this society. People who sit down and stay at home and not marching now as they were with police brutality when a known racist is in the White House. His, his second in command, he divided no, up the post. His, his, the second in command has a website, the, the alt right, racist, they don't like Jews, don't like blacks, talks about Mexicans, all this shit. And the man is sitting right next to him. Where's the black outrage? I mean, I mean, it's so backwards. This, I mean, the political shit is so backwards. But another thing, um, 
Watch the black it's not average. about colonization. I, go ahead, bro. What? No, I'm asking you, why should blacks be outraged? Exactly. Why should, okay, okay, what? first of all, why blacks did not vote for, right, well, why blacks <laughs> didn't vote for a white woman who says people who make a, less than $100,000 a year will go to school for free? That's a black African-American cause. Total free. She wouldn't do that. She oh, wouldn't have done well, that. Well, hold up, hold up, bro, bro. Whether she would have done it or not, that's what she was running on. Right now, Donald Trump said a lot of things, and now he's backtracking. I'm just going what the woman said before she was trying to get elected. And I'm saying that is something that will bring people out to the polls, okay? But it didn't Racial work. disparity and things like that. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So why you mean black, how bad you said, people you said talk blacks about should be outraged. Why? Because of Donald Trump. If you don't, well, if, if you're a black person, hold on, if you, especially people on this NI, if you talk about racism every day and say the white man is putting our foot in our black, you talk about the history, slave, uh, Atlantic slave trade, all that stuff, you should try with it, everything in your power to get your voice heard and don't let Donald Trump get into office. Now that he's in, you should be out there protesting. With those folks, and I'm just saying, the people that is talking about police brutality—that's the thing. You should be just enraged because the man at the top fact, who's going to put never said the anything, uh, against bad against blacks. That's what he, he never said. That he talked yes, about. Yes, he Mexico. did. No, he no, 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 bro. That's, no, 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 no. Bro, bro. When he looks at the situation, and I want to go on. I want to make other two other points. When they okay, asked I'm give you him time. about the situation. When the black people were out there protesting, he took one side. He did not ever say that the police needs to uh, have better training. He did not. He said it's the black problem. That's why police is. He said get stop and frisk. That's dog with well, those he didn't, exact words he didn't. that it's a black problem? Were those his, is, were those his exact words? Uh, those no, 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 no. The words, question was the problem. question was how are you? They always ask him how are you going to mend all the protests throughout the election? He see protests Michael Brown, all the protests. Let me. It's, let me. Like, come on, y'all. Okay. I ain't even fit, y'all. I, I, can I? He, oh, go ahead. Look, me no, and Al talking. Yo, me and the host, and I got two other points to make. When he looked at all of that, his conclusion: the police is right. The civilians and community has no point. <laughs> And, and, and Hillary Clinton, she says, okay, both sides need to come together. The community and the police, which is, the, is, is not politically correct, is well, it is politically correct. It's sound. It's logical. It's what we actually live in. All right, so he because didn't say all the police are not good. So that? when you, so, so I'm just saying, brother, he is the only, he as a candidate took the police side and looking at everything, he said uh, the police is right, the, the community is wrong. You're misleading the people. Let me off ask him a question. He didn't say anything about blacks. He didn't. He didn't. He's not racist. At he, least no, he, he did anyway. say a thing about blacks because when we're talking about white people are not up in arms. When, when so so you saying when the black people was protesting like here in Baltimore, Ferguson, there weren't black people uh, coming from black communities upset about poli- white police officers and other police officers coming in their community and getting away with murder and treating them any type of way. Is, 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 why you let might sound like coming from Donald Trump. If Donald Trump said those people need to get their shit together and stop worrying about the police, that might sound racist. Those blacks. No, 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 no. That no, sounds no. racist. But take it off. Well, I'm just saying for the... Well, well, he said my well, my African American. Then he said a, a person uh, made a decision because he was Mexican. Come on, bro. And look, I, I, I'm saying, well, regardless, the man won, you right? You know, I haven't even. Hey, y'all sound like I, losers. And I, I've made. Listen, listen, hold up. I came on and I didn't interrupt nobody. Now y'all we cut me off. And you then, you right do now, interrupt y'all doing people. the same thing I'm doing. I haven't even finished. So I, I, I made a statement. Me and Alquan is going back. Why is everybody else coming in? Alquan, when you let him out, let me know. I got something for him. Don't worry. Okay. Well, now, now, let me make my other point. That's that's just my opinion. To where I look at it, the shit is all backwards and shit. 
You're supposed to be upset, especially for the man in office that's going to send down policy when you have a Republican Senate and a Republican House and a Republican president. As a party, they can pass down bills that can fuck up a lot of people, okay? they Basically, they can cut all all social services out if they want and just pay for the military. Nobody can't do shit. So this is another thing. When you talk about colonization, colonizing, colonizing something, China is not colonized. Colonization is like imperialization, and it's talk about the three C's. When when we're talking about white people going into Africa and other people going into other lands and colonizing that land, there's the three C's. They spread their Christianity, they change their commerce, and they change their civilization. China, they didn't colonize no damn uh, uh, um, of China. China, did, I mean, you may have some people maybe Christians, China but they didn't, didn't change their money. China. They did not. They did not change the money. They did not. They not. They did, they did not go into China and say, China, you guys need to be civil. So we're going to give you. Uh, uh, we're going to give you a, a, a particular type of structure. China been doing that shit all the time. So I'm you just saying. Right. When you talk about you're the right. Europe. Right. Okay, so when you, you talk, know, I mean, I mean, I remember this in college. In the, I remember this in college, and y'all gonna say the white teacher told me wrong, but I look at it, and he's right. When you're talking about European colonizing other areas in the world, Christianity, their commerce, their money, and their civilization, teaching them how to talk, teaching them how to sit. Uh, uh, when 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 they say uh, someone spitting on the ground is not civil, they make new laws. So the three C's, bro, in China, it's just not like that. Um, and, and, and another thing, and I'm done after this, man. Y'all can have it. Africa is a continent. Now I got a question for you. No, hold up, bro. Let me finish. I don't even want to answer your question. When you go to the a country, Africa is a big mass of land. I guarantee you, people within Africa before the white man came, they did not call themselves African. If I was a journey, if I journeyed from South Africa to the Ivory Coast, and I look at someone, their skin looks like mine, their hair looks like mine, right? I'm going to say I'm a South African. They're going to say they're Nigerian. They're, I'm going to have a different wardrobe. They're going to have a different wardrobe. And we live on the same continent, and we may have different takes. They may sit uh, sit a certain way where we don't sit. They may eat certain things I don't eat. I, they say we do this. I, their religion might be this. I say we don't do that. So there's differences. Look at Uganda. Look at the civil war in Uganda in the 70s. Uganda and them had a civil war. They, once again, communists and democracy. Russian was filling the north. It's like it's like all, all the northern part of the country is always was communist. Southern parts of the country is always quote unquote democracy. They just gave them weapons, and then the Ugandans and which got one. I mean, I'm talking about not Uganda, but the, uh, they were fighting each other. They were killing each other. With, you with, 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 and then I'm just saying, if you want to keep people out of your business, when you have in fighting, both sides don't call an outside party in. Because when you look at African infighting, they're getting their weapons. If you have a battle in between two people, each side is going to get their weapons to kill each other you. from another nation, and it's probably going to be Russia or the United States. And if it's not Russia or the United States, it's going to be another country that that's getting their weapons from Russia and the United States. All right, my, my that's life, all that's I got to say, bro. Okay. Right, well, you know, the funny thing he said, Alquan. Hang on for a second. He said, "So nobody in the continent called himself African." He's been trying. He's been trying. He did say Didn't that you? people in South Africa called themselves South Africans. <laughs> no, I was using. No, I don't listen. I, I don't know the proper terminology. No, I don't know the proper mm-hmm. terminology that South Africans were calling themselves in the year 1100. I don't know, they but call I was, they call but, 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 but you know what I meant, Dr. Young. You're being an asshole. You all can't right, deny what the fuck right, I said. Right, right, yeah, I, I do. No, you I don't. Think, well, like what are you going to call them then? And if you're going to call them then, you're going to call them then, you're going to call them then, Pianchi. All right, Mullah like has a question. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was going to uh, comment on the whole. Pianchi can't use uh, the word African no more. Please do the uh, ancient words, please. <laughs> I thought we were gonna do the uh the whole uh what's that thing that the people are doing, the marching, the riot not rioting, but the uh what's that called? 
uh, the, um, protest, protest. They have fifth yeah. column. So the whole, so I don't think, just like I said about Pan African, I think it's lost its uh, effectiveness. I think a more powerful stance would to be to provide for those people who um, in turn like had things happen to them. I think like to contribute to their funerals and to make sure that the loved ones that they left behind have something and things of that nature. I think that's more of a display of power than just to run around the streets and t- let everybody know you're mad. I mean, bringing awareness to things is good, but it, it lost its effectiveness. Like, the best thing to do, like, when something we inflicted with something is to show them, like, no matter how many of us you take down, we're going to build ourselves right back up, you know, like an ant colony. You knock they stuff down, they're going to build it right back up. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think that don't you do you think that illegal aliens or immigrants do you think that they should be deported from the country? No, I don't. Uh, I don't. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. The reason I why I don't think they should be deported from the country, if they're being deported to the country, every business who had them picking up strawberries and picking up apples, they should also go to jail and be fined too. Because I'm just letting you know. Well, I they agree with you. Anybody that hires anyone that ha- oh, wait a minute. Now, you was here. Now, you left. Come on, now. Leave it alone. <laughs> we don't need well, you no, to you tell us no the, damn I, details. No, saying, bro, you, I wasn't you, talking you, I mean, to you. you. Question to, well, I wasn't you talking, talking to? to you. You didn't I'm say talking to the gentleman that was talking. Well, you didn't mention his name. You didn't make it clear. You were, you were you didn't make it clear. You made that statement. You made that statement to everybody who was listening. You did not make it clear. I did not ask you. I asked you. I said, sir, well, let me ask you a question. Make it clear next time. Make it clear that you're not talking to me. I ain't got to make nothing clear. You just take your butt off. Make it clear Make it clear that you're talking to a Pacific person. It's clear now. No, I'm going to put it like this. I ain't talking to all facts. No, as right, I Mandela, asked you, that was you. I, I opened your line, Mandela. You're open, right? As I was asking okay. the other gentleman, uh, Alquan, I think you agreed that if a person, if an individual is here illegally without a visa, they should be deported, like they do in other countries. But uh, I was just asking him what he felt about that. All right. Well, let's get to 313. Oh, okay. You want to answer? Go ahead. All right. Let's get get to the 313. You're on air. He might be illegal as hell. All right. 313. 313. You're on air. All right. Let's put them on mute. We'll get back to them in a minute. Anonymous caller. You're on air. Petapu, honorable brother, I, Alquan. <laughs> nah, my name is Jack. Oh, uh, and uh, <laughs> honorable Queen Mother, Sister Lorraine, honorable High Chief Brother Tyrone, honorable High Commander Brother Mendelicon, and all the Talk Real Solution family and friends. Oracle informant lady I am, ethereal light, elemental love, elixir for life. And I want to thank you, Brother Alcon, for bringing this format, even though it's diverted from your first question. And I will have to repeat some things I've said. However, I want to honor Miss Honorable Sister Miss Lady for asking the question to explain the prefix pan, and when we were given the definition, we should always give the reference from which it was brought forth, because we have to remember all of our words have been given meanings by way of the very degenerated beings who have taken over all of our stuff, and we manifest with our words. Also, person doesn't have to go to the so-called schools and colleges to prove anything because I have been to all the universities, Ivy League included, and they do not, schools do not teach you. It's the teachers who have messed up all of our children across the world, but especially in the United States of America. And I've been given my credentials and screened by the FBI to be able to 
be within the school system, so I speak with facts, truth, and information. Again, unless you're from another planet, there are only three people, types of races in and on this earth, Negroid, Caucasoid, Mongoloid. The Caucasoid and Mongoloid have a dysfunction. Whenever a human and a human kind, they are humankind, have a cell and it's not functioning the way it's supposed to function. It's a dysfunction, it's dysplasia, it's cancer. But more emphatically, the Mongoloids up until the 1970s, children with the Down syndrome were called Mongoloids. And that normally is coming from the old egg and or incest, and I can give more details. The mankind, we were never supposed to mate with them. We are of the Negroid, if you will, the higher universal melanin-enriched, sovereign, supreme, super man, higher universal melanin-enriched, sovereign, supreme, super womb man, are of the four corners of the planet Earth, wherever we place our feet is holy ground. But more emphatically, we were here long before these degenerates, if you will, they were genetically engineered and before they took shape and became and looked like mankind, they're a kind of man, a kind of woman. And their time is up. They're 6,000 years. They're decaying. They are born with cancer, dysplasia means cancer. So any time, I'm, I'm so dismayed that you would even, or someone was trying to align the Caucasoid woman, notice I said woman, with the Negroid woman, W-O-M-B-M-A-N. They, all of these artificial wombs that they gave hysterectories to many of my friends, so that they could genetically engineer a womb for these degenerates, and they're using them right in our faces. If they're not using those, they're using and hiring the wombs of these melanin-enriched East Indian. Please, when you're talking about the East Indians, please call them East Indians. They're not from this continent. And I, I'm, I don't understand when did the time of the word Africa come up. I think someone was trying to bring that, point that out. Again, all of these continents used to be connected. It's called Pangaea. And the bottom line yeah, is trying to align every melanin-enriched, pardon me, that was before human, humans existed, the Pangaea came. Well, I know that we walked all over the place before these continents split up. And we were in this continent, in this hemisphere, before the genetically engineered degenerates from especially Great Britain came across the shores to our continent. And I am telling you, they, it, they're they letting you know now that the bulk of any of their ships, they couldn't have built ships that fast to bring that many melanin-rich people from one continent. And they're telling you that the bulk of their ships sank into the water. So I don't understand that. And I'm not understanding people who just want to keep stupidity going and arguing. We're supposed to be here enjoying our creation. And thus far, we've got all these degenerates that brought this lead poisoning to these shores. We did not have jails nor prisons. We did not have firearms, fire water, until these degenerates brought it here. And even in this day, that same lead that's been in their bullets since the Civil War, and I keep reminding you, the Revolutionary War is the Civil War. 
has caused libido and mental instability, and it's passed on to their born and unborn children. And that hasn't stopped, and the medical industry won't tell you that it's passed on to the born and unborn children, and there's no cure. They'll say, oh, let's take their blood. Well, we all have the blood of our daddy, but it is the <coughs> higher universal melanin rich, sovereign, supreme, super womb man's womb that counts. Mandela. We're a matriarchal society. And the bottom Mandela line is that, that, that you're asking your first <laughs> question about these people that try to harness people and say that they're pan-Africanists, which I still don't understand that meaning. The bottom line is, and then to marry a caucasoid that is degenerated, they're born with cancer. Even President Obama admitted as soon as he got into office, he said his mama had cancer and he wants to fight it. Well, she was born with it. And when you start looking at these commercials, they're telling you every day their children are born with so many cancers, and they try to highlight and say, oh, this is an unusual, rare cancer, though. And then we'll give our children to them, as that woman did, and, and let them put baboon hearts and everything in our children. Because we think we're supposed to go to them to help heal us, and we can heal ourselves when we remember who we are. I'm sick and tired of all this. And then you're talking about the Electoral College. Most of you, I remember in eighth grade, I, 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 I was totally against that some time ago. And, and I saw the unfairness of it, but it's been prevailing. And one thing President Obama said in 2008 before he won the election, that he was going to look into the Electoral College, but he did not. He brought all these undocumented, illegal immigrants to this country that has breached our children's inoculations, which is giving them autism, along with all these electrical... So, Angel Lady Love, so you're saying that you disagree with uh, pan-Africanism? Excuse me? So you're saying you, you disagree say? with the concept of, of uh, pan-Africanism? I still don't understand it. I'm in this continent. I'm of the four corners of the planet Earth. I do not right, understand so the word or term Africa. I do not comprehend that term. And it is okay, so you kind of like me then. <laughs> That's Mandela's kind of counterpart. You and I in alignment with many things, <laughs> believe it or not. I didn't know okay, that. so that's good. Not. Even Mandela kind of was uh, forced to admit it, <laughs> too. Now, 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 now listen, now, don't lie, don't lie, hold on, hold on. I wasn't forced to admit nothing, and BRK quit lying. You two, y'all some lying motherfuckers. Let me tell you this. I, hey, I didn't know you had a uh, I, I, I know what y'all doing, but guess what? I'm not going to quibble. I'm not going to wallow in vomit or do a paralysis of analysis of whether it was this one did this or that one did that one. I'm talking about right now. Revolution is the only solution, and you're going to overturn this shit, or we all in the car going off a cliff at 100 miles an hour, blind, like Ray Charles, Helen Keller, Stevie Wonder, and Jose Feliciano. And I'm serious about That's this. That's not shit. what you your understand? sister told us. Well, well I'll tell you what. i tell you what. You can try to throw another third party in here all you want, Sarah, but I'll tell you this. I'm an African internationalist, and I'm not. I did not cut across you. I did not cut across you. You were able Who are you talking to? to? All that to, I'm talking to you. Don't well, listen. Listen, to this uh, listen um, um, I'm not going to do anything uh, with you because I know this is the Little Rascals program. She's a matriarch. Uh, you got to be quiet, Mandela. I know this is the Little Rascals program. Everybody, everybody hold on for one I second. I want to talk about my Anybody hold on for one second. All right, hold on for one second. One second. One second. One second. One second. One second. Let's try and see with this last caller, 313. Let's see who this is. You're on the air. Oh, now they're scared. 313. You scared? Is that Chicago? 313? Oh, don't tell me that's, that's, that's Chicago. Chicago. Chicago three. Oh, that's Michigan. 313 three, is Michigan. It's probably one of the little rascals from another sector. Okay, I thought but that anyway. was Chef Rob. Chef Rob and Yacht. Hey, man, you got to let the matriarch talk, man. I was really humbly Listen. All right, well, hold on. 
Listen, she don't need no cheerleader. She gonna talk enough on her own. Hold on for a minute before she, I let her go. One second. One second. Hey, one second before you go. One second. Okay, one second. We got a new caller. Hold on. Hold on. We got a new caller. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna give you enough time to speak. Just hold on. Uh, we got the eight six zero. What's up? What's going on? What's tonight's topic? Oh wow! Wow! Uh, is, is the white, oh shit! Is it, the tonight's nice topic is the white woman God. That's the topic. Is oh that, shit! Oh, I can what the fuck oh, we look have at here? You. Look at you! Look at you! Look at you! you. Look at you! 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 The topic is pan Africanism. How fake it is. Oh, you know how Gary hey, come on hey, dumb every hey, night. She come on dumb well, every night like he ain't never heard a goddamn it's word. I'll say that. The only way you know it's a fake when it's not really going nowhere. Simple as that. And that's what's happening right now. now not going you anywhere. could pump this They could sit there and talk about this and that black car and they might own a nice little gun. But when we talk about real liberation and power. That's action. Not a little something where you see on social media, take a picture of your gut and get on black, all this shit. And I've been seeing this. I've been paying attention a lot. That is, is this is a new term that I like to call, and I got this from my friend. We call it the um, hacktivist, hack division, and it said non-revolutionary. All these things, you know what I'm saying? Never revolutionary, we call it. Never revolutionary, for better terms. So, yes, there's no real pan Just Let me ask you this, Gary. Let me ask you this. Uh, can you be a pan-Africanist leader of an African nation and be married to a white woman? Absolutely not. Is that possible? It defeats the purpose. No. And let me tell you what. Yep. There, and there before you go. I go first, if you, you, I know you say you, you're, you're like get alcohol. Have you ever dated a white woman, a Caucasian woman? I'm not going to lie. Ooh. Back. <laughs> you got your pink toe. He got a pink toe. Okay, okay, okay. okay all right, all right. Let's, 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 let's stay focused. Stay focused. Okay. Back if you know what they, the white woman, you can't even talk about the subject. Oh, no. Hold on. 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 Hold that's worse. No, 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 any age of our life. As long as we learn something, we get back. We, we know better. You follow me? Oh, yeah. Okay. I was just trying to so do my thing. Do it me all. Say this, me saying this, okay. Why I said no, because obviously it defeats the purpose. Because seriously talking about building a nation and want to see blackness, it has to reflect that. Your children should be reflect in your own image. Just like your wife. But they will, because yeah. we got the doctor and mother. So if it's not even in that direction, and you and you try to say you try to go to liberation and actual real revolution, it, it's it's a false. It's, it's not reality because at the end of the day, that white bitch is gonna compromise everything. You know what I'm saying? You know some of these stupid oh, morons today they had white women it. as slaves. I look at this. Look at this. You hear stories that more said we had slaves, but we had white women as slaves because you know they were we treat them well and all that. No, that's still a parasite. You should not be treating nothing as a slave. The only thing you as a as an individual say is supposed to be in higher greatness. There shouldn't be no rulership or no enslavement of not on your own, but these parasites. Matter of fact, you should even take them as slaves. As well, if you cut their heads off from the start, because keep them around, will soon empower them to come and overthrow you. And history has shown that. It's shown that for the mulatto upbrings, these bastard children. Once they know they came off that white, hell, dude, you is crucial. And they took over overthrow. <laughs> 
So, you know, that's my state on that. All right. So it looks like everybody but Pianchi is uh, in agreement that you cannot have a white wife and be a Pan-African African leader. Well, uh, yeah, I'm on the fence on that. I don't you think need to have – nobody's on here as a member of a pan-African organization or country. So how do you know? Well, man, You don't know what their policy are. The you don't know what their bylaws are. <laughs> you don't know what their bylaws are. You just – He's just an emotionalism reaction from a United States citizen. Well, I'm going by the the meaning of the word. Once you throw the African part in, then it has to be what it has to be unless you're talking about nations only. Pan mean mean to cover all. Come on now. (laughs) Cover all what? what? Americans say African people. Africans could be saying African nations only. Whether y'all realize it or not, that each and every one of y'all got to be redefined in 2017. I don't give a damn what anybody called anything from the past. Even you Negroes in America, you blacks or you colors or whoever the fuck you are, you're going to be redefined based on what we are confronting with today. So whatever you call yourself or don't call yourself, that's not the issue. Stolen legacy is all about you. So y'all can have 144 tribes or 12 tribes or 144,000. You are a weak, powerless force because this ain't about no tribalism, no gangsterism. We need one game, and that's freedom, justice, and total independence from the Congo to the Bongo. That's the game that I'm working with. All that other shit is simply uncivilized. Go ahead, little rascals. Oh, he getting his brain together. See, we're going to have to have a beard in downtown. I knew you would come around eventually. You just got to talk There you go, enough. speaking out of the east end of a horse's ass. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You you ready to just... enough, start making sense. There you go. You ready <laughs> to just have some fun. You should be on home box or comic view with some of that shit you put out, you know? Because it sounds nah, real funny. That's speaking it real. Laughing. While we're facing genocide, almost war crimes, and in a few more days, y'all might look around and say, God damn, where did all the black people in America go? So I'll tell you where they're going to go. They're going to go to the 39,000 guillotine, where there's 800 camps waiting on your ass, and they don't hey. use them 39,000 guillotines to show you hey, how you're going to get your 40 acres in the moon and your reparations. You understand? So you can call yourself what you want. If you're afraid of the guillotines, then if you're off your this damn phone, I, I never said anything about being afraid. I know. I'm scared of niggas like you. I ain't scared of no guillotines. right now. Talking about I'm scared of I'm scared, scared of niggas like you. I'm not scared of no guillotine. Nice to warn you about this. If you do this, the white man got this ready. You sound like a bitch. I don't respect. Well, I'm telling you, I'm not scared of no white. I'm scared of niggas like you. Don't do this, or they're gonna send this guillotine, chop your heads up with these thousand coffins. They're gonna chop your head off. God damn, you sound like an elder bitch. I don't know what I sound like. I'm telling you what I know. I know that you are a white man playbook, right? Weak. Okay, I tell you what, I'm the Weak. bad guy, and Uncle Sam is the good guy. Hey, but that's you, 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 you. Quick, the white man's playbook. God damn, I think this, you don't want to beat. I think you play, hey, more than the playbook. You play this beat. Okay, real, well, no matter what you think, no matter no matter what you, got, what you think, okay, feel, you believe, or your opinion, you got a lot of words that. Don't do That's nothing, that, but just keep man, it. Man, that's you need to hook up with the sister Angel. Y'all can make some music together because y'all. Well, you know what? You know, you know what you need to hook up with. You need to hook up Ooh. with uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, the little girl, uh, Madonna, or somebody like that. That way, <laughs> you know, old. you can get somebody that really thinks like you, right? Because that's what you need to do. <laughs> and uh, and this guy huh? that's talking named I Gary is your thinking. Listen, this guy named Gary Jafrican, who knows this bitch? Who is hey, don't call he? He's nothing. He's nobody. He said you can't even speak Patois. Don't call my name. You're, you're weak, man. I don't want to hear no, no excuse. Don't call my name. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what. Patois. On, on, on behalf of the people. All that garbage. And you can refer hey, to my name by this name right here. On behalf of the people, I don't have anything else to say. I don't have anything else to say to you because you're doing your usual. That's the block, tackle, and crumble. All right. All right. Hold on. Let me try this line and see if they're back on. 313, you're on the air. Detroit, in the house. 
They that's little salad. That's Mandela con. That's that's Detroit in the house. They little salad. They just trying to see what's going on. Right. But let me let me say this. Right. Uh, I have no time to quibble with the little rascals. I have some more additions on behalf of African people. As long as this guy don't keep coming in, giving me this ad and keep uh, giving me this commercial, Gary. You're doing a goddamn good job. You know I wouldn't even mention you. Fuck up, come on, you, that's all, all right. you can do. Well, you, that means, look, let me try the All right, let me try the anonymous caller. Who's this? Yeah, JNYCA, a Mandela Khan, you block tackling and fumbling, brother. Listen, let me tell yeah. you one thing. You <laughs> said there was rascal. not gonna be the an right election. You said there was not gonna be an election. Remember? That, can, can we bring somebody bring that 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 audio back? You said there was not going to be an what election. I told what you, you motherfucker, and, and what I'm standing on, that Hillary Clinton yeah. or Donald Duck will never sit in the white people's house. That's what the and fuck I is. told you. He and said I stand it. on it today. He's sitting Donald there. Duck He's gonna, and Hillary Clinton he will win. never sit in the white people's yeah. house. So let me ask you okay. a question. No, no, on a, on a serious side, I, you know, I joke around, but listen, seriously, man, Delica, you know, they they talking about that 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 uh that they really don't count um all the 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 electoral votes into December something, right? And then um you know she won the popular uh you know popular vote, um but they can overturn it. What do you think about that whole process? I know you don't like the system, but. Do you, I mean, do you think that, that, that they could flip something in the middle uh, of, of he, December? Here's, here's, here's what I know. See, you're giving they your power. Here's what we are uh, telling you. Half of us don't give a fuck what y'all two talking about. Half of us don't want neither <laughs> one of you motherfuckers, okay? It'll so like half of us bill. With the, listen, and half of us with the red, black, green as the leader, we're going to overturn your uncle, and you can have the Wicked Witch of the West, or Donald Duck as to who you want best, both of them motherfuckers are incapable of running the planet as it relates to the commander-in-chief based on what the United States of America stands for, the eagle, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. America, the it emperor has no clothes. Are. The emperor has no clothes. There's nothing you can do to save it. I don't give a fuck what the electoral college do on the, uh, uh, the 16th of December. I know this, that the people are speaking, and all you blacks, is busy saying, well, look, Mandela, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You better get your ass out of your feet, on your feet, out of your seat, in the seat, <laughs> and get real. Because other than that, that's the only thing going to save you. We're going to shut them down. Shut them down. And then a goddamn okay. thing you can do about it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, Dick, Gregory, uh, that thing too. But Dick Gregory is discredited because elections took place. See, we got to no understand, people, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go I ahead. just got to say, we got to understand, I, a lot of people, I know we hold these people near and dear in our hearts, but they got very female in their old age. When we talk about Dick Gregory and uh, Steve Coakley and them, they did good in their time, but as they progressed throughout the years, they kind of went somewhere else, so... I no, just I like the same thing. No problem with the with, with. Steve Coakley still had integrity. The only thing is when he started choosing uh, Jesse Jackson to setting up Martin Luther King, which you know he made a good argument. But that's the only no, thing. No, when he I got into the whole, <laughs> when he got his Professor Griff on and started doing those little conspiracy videos, that's when he lost it. Well, don't you think uh, the, I, the people I, that are running it. this country? The people running this country, though, that's gonna about to run this country, which are older uh, 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 people, don't you think they a little seen now with their mindsets? Oh yeah, I mean we need people who who were born in the '60s or '70s to start taking over instead of people who were adults in the '60s. I mean this is crazy. But back to Steve Coakley, I have to say, to my knowledge, he's one of the few. Or maybe he's the only person who did what he did, damn near died, then came back to tell the story, <laughs> but then he eventually died. He said he they probably tried to kill him. You know, could have been, or maybe he was just sick in some way. But whatever the case was, I think it was remarkable that he actually came back because he looked like he was dead for a minute 
Then he came back. He was able yeah. to tell the story for a little while. Then then he uh, died. See, my take so that's on remarkable. Kofi, he did, yeah, he did good when he was like working with Chicago and everything. And I just think that being good wasn't as marketable or profitable as you know people want conspiracy. They don't want to get the act together. But I'm capitalizing. And he just went that route. A lot of like Professor Griff wasn't well, all bad way back when, but he, he decided to capitalize. A lot of people, I mean, don't always now Griff stay that's good. A different type you know of what I'm saying? I, I don't put him as no Coakley category. Same boat. Griff is a him, Dick Gregory, all in the same boat. You got to understand, people don't stay good. Nah, nah, Coakley is like, different. He's different. <laughs> okay. The other guys, the cool. Agree to disagree. Now I will give you this about Coakley. He had a good job in the mayor's office. I'm sure he must have been pulling, at the very least, around 80 Gs a, a year. Yeah, he started speaking out, especially after the mayor died. Then I guess he lost his job, and he started speaking out. Then he started selling videotapes and getting donations, and he started looking kind of raggedy. I, I, I don't know what was up. Sometimes I was thinking maybe my man might be smoking a pipe in his spare time. I, I, I'm like, I don't know what's mm-hmm. going on here. But... <laughs> That's exactly what was happening. Cocaine <laughs> is a hell of a drug. When you got eighty thousand dollars, you can afford it. But when they sweep that rug off of your feet, yeah, you doing some strange things. Get that yeah, so fixed. I, I gotta admit that that seemed weird because his, his wardrobe wasn't up. When you see him when he had the job in Chicago, my man's wardrobe was together. Then when he was doing it on his own, his wardrobe wasn't too too together. You know. Yeah. Well, he still gave us some good what information. You <laughs> mean if he? All right, let me. We got know. a new caller. Oh, go ahead. We got we got a uh, unknown caller. Who's this? I want to talk about my Supreme High Commander, Elder Barber, if you will, Doctor Honorable Doctor Richard Califax Dick Gregory. He's the one that brought to my attention in 2014 about the lead poisoning. So when you don't honor your elders and you have something to lambage them, I say go within yourself. How dare you? Add that to the fact. No, but Dick Dick Gregory is discredited because he said no elections would take place. Excuse me. And they they took place. Sure, I did not hear that. And I'm sure that it's interesting that you'd rather say something like that instead of talking about in the 80s when he brought to our attention emphatically about the mad cow which these degenerates repeated at the end of the 1990s. And the bottom line yeah. here is, this is what I'm saying. You disrespect elders, you disrespect yourself, and you don't want to listen. Now, want to listen. No, we're not disrespecting him as an elder. That, uh, let me we're just yeah, him we're not disrespecting him at all. About this, uh, this uh, Melania, is that her name? And the key here is these People are born in the zoo. That's why they will have sex with animals. We wrote about that, Leviticus 18.23. The other variable is that, I assure you, I don't think she'll be stealing anything from the White House if she were to do eight years in the White House as Hillary Clinton, Rodham Clinton did, and stole the artwork also China wear, as well as a sofa. She also had the white water. Did anyone look that up? And the Rose Law Firm with that financial, what they call the savings and loan scandal. And I contend that this other man pointed out from the FBI most recently, not only probably to hopefully save his own butt because they're all up in the politics, They're disregarding the honorable young Edward Snowden, who did not commit treason nor tyranny, as this Hillary Rodham Clinton and her impeached husband, that I will repeat, whose name is William Jefferson Blythe Clinton. He uses his adopted daddy's last name, Clinton, as Adolf Snickelgruber Hitler uses his adopted daddy's last name. Now, I, See, that's what we do. We wanting to have some kind of chaos. The, in Philadelphia, at 16th and Walnut, on Saturday, there were a group of youth. They're not saying they're melanin and rich, but that's the implication. 
and several of them broke away from the crowd. See, that's a very important intersection. And they started beating Caucasian people up, one of which was they called him a detective, then they're saying he's a police officer. Can I, and his can I interject real quick, sis? As he turned to try to help his wife, who was being beaten down. Now, no Thank kind you. of violence at any time. We're not people of that ilk. Our children are being misinformed by way of the social media. I told you they use subliminal seduction. That's the name of the book they used for my textbook in the 60s and 70s. But more emphatically, look up businessdictionary.com, subliminal advertising. They can flash. Thank you, Lady Love. Well, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Mob. Please, sir. Yeah. Very important. Uh-huh. Do you want to ask you a question real quick? I told you that in Philadelphia, they were arguing over being called black in the 60s. We'd fight Just somebody, even go. our own, if they called us black, because that's a misnomer. And we can, we can manifest with our words. We've got to start respecting each other. You put me on mute and never tried to open it up again. That's Actually, why I had to call that. You, I put you Thank on you. mute for two seconds, and then I took it off. You were off mute all that time. Well, from the last time it, you spoke. You did it silently, and to me, that's a degenerative move. Because you oh, my God. Know. Okay, oh, we God, got you, sister. Come on. Hey, no, hey, Come I'm on, Ms. Delacon. No, 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 hold on. Hold on. Let me just say this. You can go next, G. Hey, this is what it is. Um, Yeah, please don't cut it out. Uh, here it go. See, this is the problem we have. Our people will give us a lobster dinner, and I'm I'm using an analogy. They'll give us a lobster dinner, and then afterward, they follow up with loads of shit. For us to, they put loads of shit on our plate, and we eat that too, and we d- digest it as truth. We gotta understand, we gotta separate when somebody's telling us the truth. Doesn't mean that they're always telling us the truth. Even the greatest of people have character flaws, and just because they told you the truth for five years, don't mean in that ten year span that everything they said was true. So we have to discern and stop just having faith in people and believing that every time they speak is gonna be the truth. People have. No matter who you are, you have certain things you've got to accomplish in life. One thing is maintain your stability as far as providing for your home, your kids, and things of that nature. And when you got to do that and you don't have the means to do it any other way, sometimes you might go to the dark side to accomplish those needs. If you see some thirsty uh, people that could be manipulated, and it's just like my boys back in the days, they like – I'll be like, man, why are you selling dope to that motherfucker? Shit, if I don't do it, somebody else is. I might as well profit from it. And that's how a lot of our people get, especially when they be involved in these organizations. They get tired seeing that people is not going with the flow. So they'd be like, fuck it. And, I mean, that's only natural. That's human nature. But I digress. That's not for everybody. It's about respect. Right. And we've got to learn to respect our elders. Whether they're saying something or not, they'll always tell you, do your homework. Look for self. But Dick Gregory didn't yourself. tell us that. He said there will be no elections, man. That's what he said. <laughs> he, if, if, if I would have heard him say that, I would have looked for something to come disrupt. And the very next day it did because the degenerates are not being taught the way our procedure is. And furthermore, we do not have a monarchy. So I don't know why. Miss Delacon. Miss Delacon, can Gregory speak? That you all pay attention <laughs> that these people are using words to get your attention. So many blah, of you blah, voted blah, blah, when you blah, blah, hadn't blah, voted before. Big Gregory did say that, though. All the foreigners. And they even Uh-oh. voted. You, you hear that? You don't want the love? truth. Security numbers. Big <laughs> Gregory did, did say that. Big Gregory turned anything into a conspiracy. Even a cracked egg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, any damn fool that utilizes any kind of mankind-made medicine, whether it's legal or illegal, are just that damn fool. Seriously. Red herring. Because none of their <laughs> stuff cures nor heals. So if they get stuck and it is addicting, at one time they even said, if you take it one time, you'll die. The bottom line here is, no one wants to look at it. They're going to do it anyway. And then they look like fools. And now we got those same damn fools that were drug addicts sitting in the pulpit 
telling us what to do, all on the radio telling us what to do. And, and I'm all on YouTube tired. telling us what to do. I'm sick of degenerates trying to tell people what to do. And they are still, once a drug addict, just like an alcoholic, always one. I agree. What did the sober people yeah. tell people to do? Donald Trump has never, he said he never took a drink or a drug, and he's crazy as fuck. Hitler. He wasn't yeah, on dope. I mean, I mean, I'm mean, i just saying, you saying a lot. I mean, you know these crackheads, but you, you got to look at these sober-minded people. They crazy Hitler was well. on dope. Hitler was a speed freak. But one thing I can say is someone used drugs. Listen, the only thing I want to say is... You to call somebody misnomer them crazy? Why? No, 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 I'm just, no, I'm just saying. Listen, if someone, if someone... on children that don't do drugs, they may not have a baby. Uh, by way of their own body, they may have surrogates. Okay, like Angie, the, let me just make a point. The other with the big ass, excuse me, says she's, she's going to use a surrogate. She used a surrogate all the time, just like that princess did over there in England. Okay, I just want to say something. Goes into the, a the person hospital with dysentery after she was arrested. You do got to talk true because she don't. No, I'm not going to talk true. I mean, this is, this is crazy. I mean, they old man. They they, they 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 need to get out their last words. Is that how you used to come on this, uh, uh, sir? You must not remember how you used to talk. No, I just wanted to make. A, I just wanted to oh, make a thing. I, I don't give a fuck. I mean, I, I'm good at the end of the day. I, I don't give a fuck what you think about. I just wanted to make a statement. You weren't even born. I'm older than you. I know. No, but I want to ask an elderly lady something. We had schools. We had <laughs> I want to ask you something. Us, and what they would give me, I was an excellent student. I learned you gonna more. You're going to keep trying. I'll wait. Well, and I'm actually not, not going to wait. Because the stuff that comes out of your mouth is <laughs> oh, so stupid. It just makes me sick. You, you okay, uh, listen. I, uh, okay, I, I, this is my do. question. I hear you guys. I hear you. I'll go ahead. anymore. But the okay. bottom line is, how can you call somebody crazy? You really cannot. Not the way you yeah, hey, now, 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 listen. Now, 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 listen. I hear all y'all talk about crackheads and dope, and it, it seems like the only thing I'm saying is, if someone's on drugs, you know their problem. i my question is, when people who don't use drugs, what is their problem? First of all, you need to deal with your problem. Okay? No, no, I'm just saying, no, I'm just saying, I'm just speaking in general. If someone's on drugs or crackhead, you know their problem. But when someone who's not on drugs, never used up, and they go around killing people, and they go around, that's what their problem. It's called a chemical imbalance. Chemical imbalance. Once you've been a drug addict, you're always a drug addict. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Got that? Yes, listen to Medellicon, hell. <laughs> you don't know what hey, you mean, So what is Al-Quan. your problem, Al-Quan. Major Lady Love? You, you, you're not on nothing. What's your problem? I mean, right now you sound like you... <laughs> I got some problem. Man, you're going no, crazy. I mean, what, what, what is your problem? That I had a problem. Are well, I'm just saying, someone on drugs, they, you're they you're know their problem. If you're Al-Quan. sober, you don't are know you your problem. Are you in a position to help me, or are you trying to make fun of me? Don't mess with me, Okay. I told you, I'm oh, mess with her. I am your elder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I want some kind of... Yeah, he yeah. said that uh, Trump was dumb, and this man has authored 14 books. All have been bestsellers, and you can't even get them. And well, I can say yeah, we don't even know he wrote them. I can say... I phrase it on one of, as a subtitle on his book. I feel confident I was the impetus for his apprenticeship. A position, a show. Many others have have done that too, but yet at the front, at the time of when I was taking hotel, restaurant, institution management, and I've been writing him since the '80s, and that Hillary Clinton and her husband since the '90s. Wait, you was gonna be on the show, The Apprentice? No, I gave. I am the impetus. I'm an idea person, but people take my ideas and do not pay me. So the and producer mm. took the idea of the apprentice from you? Yeah. The producer took the idea from you? And they're making money off of blood. I said I'm yeah. Yeah. We gotta do something about that. Get your money, man. Yeah, Jay, but you do you, uh, do you patent? Do you patent? You don't patent no, no idea. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you trademark. Yeah, you do anything no with an idea. idea. I mean, Anything the show is I gone. Said, I have it in writing. I still have my letters, okay? But you could, you could copyright the script, right? 
You know, know, that know that one, 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 got one. Got the one I'm saying I'm trying to bring to you. Well, you got you, you, you should get listen. your money, girl. He listen, he you doesn't talk about pimp you. You know all this information. I'm listen. ashamed. Speak this is something new. No, why is RBG gonna let our sister get I done like daddy, that? If you all knew what a daddy was, maybe you'd understand that. But this Clinton, William Jefferson, Blythe Clinton, and this Hillary Rodham Clinton. She does not represent any kind of femininity, even of the degenerated Caucasoid race. She and didn't want to take Clinton's name, you know that, don't you? Two lesbianistic. I and I'm not right. throwing lesbians under the bus, but that's really not our culture. They've made our women. I don't have a problem with lesbians. The I'm a lesbian and whispering in their ears when they're born. <laughs> now, you think I'm lying? Look at your food. It's in everything. Chocolate is in everything. And then the marijuana, add that to the corn. And you no, have heard of Hold on. corn. Hold on one second. We got a new caller, 404. You're on the air. Oh, hi, Alcorn. What's going on, oh, Jackie? Jackie? Hi, How Jackie. Are you? I didn't hear your voice. Hi, Yankee. I just wanted to know if you were hosting the show tonight. What, I didn't hear your topic. I'm sorry. Do you mind telling me? It's uh, the nail <laughs> in the coffin for pan-Africanism. Basically, we're letting it be known that pan-Africanism is uh, a bunch of BS. It can never be. Well, I was um, listening to you, the, I think it was the other night, and some some lady was on. I can't remember her name. And uh, she was saying something like that. Uh, and then Chef Rob came on and was telling her yeah, that was, she was uh, wrong. Gigi. Gigi. You remember when you started to, like, agree with her? Yep, Gigi. Uh, I, I, I somewhat um, agree with that. And I was listening earlier when you first came on. I was listening to Jay New York talk. And, you know, some of the stuff he was saying – but the, the truth is, I mean, I think, like, at the end of the day, man, people want to deny what she is, and they want to see something they're not. And we, we are American. We not African. We need that, that shit. We living in some type Uh-oh. of fairy tale land. Because as much as you want to be African and all of that shit, man, you, 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 you just not. You American. That's true, Jackie. I mean, you just say I'm black. You got a point. Or I'm, 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 my, my ancestors was from Africa, but I mean, like, if you was to go there and all this shit, you'd be just like amazed. This is amazed as if they came here. People be talking about, oh, I'm African. Like, you gonna leave New York or you gonna leave LA? You gonna leave Houston and go to, you know, Benin or Togo and fit right in with the people? And I just think that's a bunch of bullshit. You know, that's yep. just stuff like that. Uh, That's only for special people. Yep. Uh Uh-oh, Jackie spoke some wise words tonight. (laughs) And, Jackie, don't use black. That's only for people who can handle that. Stick with American. (laughs) Don't use black. Use American. Well, P.I.T., I mean, yeah, it's for those that can handle it, but you're not going to go there and fit right in. You're American. You ain't going to go there and, and, you know what I mean, you know, that damn ass smell, you're going to love it. You're going to be like, man, what's that smell? <laughs> Come on. And you're not going to be used to oh, your yeah. hands either. Yeah. Man, there's a, there's a story about Howard. It was a group of Howard uh, college students who went to Africa. They threw their passports in the sea. They said about a month they were trying to go on the sea to get their passports back because they were ready to come home. I mean, I'm just saying if you try, I'm not saying that it, it, no one was not going to do it, but I'm saying as a masses, man, people ain't trying to go back to that shit. They got a whole yeah, number of political I'm turmoil sure. over there. You're talking about American politics. You're going to go over there and you're going you're gonna to have to deal with their military, their customs, and all that shit. You might want to say, I want to go back home. Even, uh, even the guy that I was working with from Liberia, you know, I was asking him, you know, if you was to go back to the continent, would you go back to, you know, Liberia, or would you go back to another country? And he was saying the same thing, like, man, if I was to go back 
I mean, I, I would most likely I would have to go back to Liberia just because I would have to deal with learning all new laws, customs, and traditions and stuff. So you think if you here, even in America, if you have ever moved to another state, all this different shit you have to go through and learn just dealing in another state. And you're talking about going into another continent on to another country where it's going to be a whole bunch of people that look like you. And all them people that you say look like you, they might be made up of about three or four different ethnic groups and about ten different tribes. All them damn different customs and traditions, and you're going to go fit right in. It just don't make sense to me. Hey, yeah, because when you move to another city, city, you try to stay away from the hood. You, you go move to, to another, another city, city in Africa, they speak a different language. They got all different go, stuff, so it's, it's a city to city thing. They tribal. Go ahead, Pianca. I'm sorry. Well, people in cities understand each other. But it's like going to another city. You go to Chicago, you wouldn't want to be moving in the hood from what you've heard. Unless you're buying drugs. <laughs> I'm saying moving. America man. means <laughs> kingdom. Rika, R I C A. Ask Rika, R I C A. Now you have to oh, understand we this it was not from America's best futures. They did not name this hemisphere, this continent, the two continents after America best futures. It is named for what it is: kingdom. Just remember, though, nomenclature is just just descriptional, so it it really don't matter. It's just a means to understand people around manifest, you understand what you mean. Well, who's the king of the kingdom? We manifest with our words. Who's the king of that's the kingdom? When you so say kingdom, you Simba. When you say kingdom, Simba. you're saying a king is ruling. You cannot have a kingdom without a king. That's the definition of a kingdom. And, so who's the king? And when you king? understand our literature and what we've said in the past, when we've had kings, we demanded judges and vice versa. So when the time comes, and it soon comes, you'll understand that. That wasn't that. us. Still do not have that a monarch. That was those Jews in the Bible. That wasn't us. That was some Jews in the Bible. I'm talking about I what I would give the word America means. I have it in Angel Lady Love Documents. Oh, that's well, beautiful. Man, that right, now, need to check that out. right now, when all facts just said that if it's a kingdom, there has to be a king, and then somebody replied that we had that, but when we had this, then we wanted this and that. And I'm saying that that's not we. That's some Jews in the Bible. Well, they are called themselves Jews, but they are not. They are oh my the synagogue of Satan, okay? Well, that's in the Bible that says it, Russia, but those people yeah, got to write no. this. Russia, all right to say whatever yeah. they want to. Occupy Israel and Palestine. It's not our show. Y'all are so... You that's know, you know that's that's so silly. Silly. if you are... It's an organization in Dalton, Alabama that's paying Jews $50,000 to move there. Move to Dalton, you're a Jew. They They're give you paying degrees. Ukrainians up one thousand five hundred dollars with the ticket included to go to Israel. They've already moved well, uh, to northern. I'd rather Russia. go That's to not Alabama. Alabama. It's close, Simba is the king. Y'all gotta understand. Simba rules Africa. Simba. No. And if you don't believe Sheena. me, Sheena if does. If you don't believe me, rent the Lion King. Simba. Sheena does. You know Sheena. Nah, just get the Lion King, bro. I'm Queen of the Jungle. Sheena was before in December. Sheena was before you know, cartoons. You they paid that family uh, in South Africa, you know, when the Lion King comes on that uh, song? Yeah, Hollywood had to go ahead and pay them. They tried to steal the song, and uh, but they finally got the money for it. I think about two point some million dollars. That ain't it? nothing. Money is I nothing. I forgot the song. Yeah, as much as the I Lion King is. Well, I'm, I'm just saying it's better than nothing because, it, like, for 20 years or 15 years, they weren't getting anything. So. They got ripped off. <laughs> All right, let me try let's Try this uh, 313 one more time and see if they're open. 313, you're on the air. 
three, one, three. If not, the cats I got three, one, three. Detroit Stones. They are in shock in a crisis in our hardship. Detroit is in a crisis hardship state of emergency. Now let me shove this in y'all's ass right quick. Now check this out. I know. Why you want to shove it there? Come on. Why I want to shove it there? Listen, I know that half you motherfuckers. I know half you motherfuckers will take a fuzz bar in the ass. Now you talking about the white woman and Pan Africanism, (laughs) but half you motherfuckers on the line. You will take a fuzz bar in your ass. Now, let me shove this in your ass right quick. Can I tell you now, about this stuff, man? Now, let me tell you something right quick. Can I tell you about this stuff, my dog? Don't listen, let me tell I, you no more. I hardly more. listen to my father, and I never listen to God, so you can't tell me shit, Uncle Sam's dick. You better not now, ever go to prison. Now, let me, now, let, you now, let me shove this in your ass. Tonight. I know that you are not revolutionaries, and you know Black you're not either. A total you better not complete go change to the what's necessary in this country. That's why y'all blocking, tackling, and fumbling, and trying to make sure <laughs> that you keep the playbook just as it is. I told Everything you. is over. This shit y'all talking about is done, finished, finito. You're going to have to redefine what it is that you are, who you are, and I'll tell you who you are. You're an international nation of people under oppression, slavery, and exploitation. I don't give a fuck what you call yourself. <laughs> Every one of you are international people under slavery, oppression, and exploitation. Now, the red, black, and green, we want the shit over. Now, I know that's not your sector. I know wait, that's not your sector. Why did you <laughs> abandon the Pan-African nation or network? No, no, you, no that's a goddamn you, lie, Jay. I told you from the very beginning. <laughs> three years ago, the Pan-African Intelligence Network is African internationalism to the core, like the white man. Yeah, the white man then, listen, is an African did internationalist. You read, did you read the subject of uh, of uh, uh, Al Quan's show today? Did you All right, read well, it? let me give you the answer. Now, right. you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. That's your shit. And that's just what I'm saying. I dare <laughs> motherfucker He's to speak to what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. You, He's talking about it in general. Can I tell you about this stuff, Adelka? <laughs> Like I said, y'all not hearing me because you're not with the United States of Africa yeah, and the Red Black Jews in 2017. You know what, man? What y'all want to do Delica, is talk about the whole combo. Crazy for all that y'all never fucking go, yo. This is crazy <laughs> as shit. Well, well, I, what's crazy, in the places y'all what's crazy never go. is that white people are on their feet, out of their seat, they're going to speak to get these shit right down. America, and you right niggas are here trying to protect it. And keep it just as it is. Don't be That's what it is. I'm talking all this shit. I'm not scared of nothing in the church. But listen, they gonna burn y'all ass in the casket somewhere in the church. You got to talk about all this shit. It's a black club clan, niggas like you, that's causing us to go through what we're going through. But y'all are a weak, powerless force. You have nobody with you. (laughs) You're all alone, like Uncle Sam. And Uncle Sam's going down with or without your ass. And ain't a goddamn thing y'all can do about a revolution. It's the only no, solution. Now, like, revolution. Man, Delcon, you're revolution. Work with the revolution. Revolution. Would you rather work with the Klan than us? Shit, I'll get a better chance at it because I know this. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. Yeah, I know you this. your own property. Uh, I know this. Man, I tell you about that. that much. Listen to this. Hey, I know this. Garvey worked with him. Uh, Malcolm, uh, a whole lot of people. The Klan gonna tell me, look, nigga. I don't want you to win. When did Garvey work with the Klan? And, 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 and listen, and here's what the Klan gonna tell me. They're gonna say, "Look, white men and, uh, and 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 black men don't mix." I'm gonna say, "Okay, I like that." Okay, now <laughs> white women and black men don't, men don't mix. Okay, I like that. Okay, now uh, with y'all, y'all wanna go with what we got right now. See, I can work better with the Ku Klux Klan than I can the Black Klux Klan. <laughs> and y'all the most dangerous motherfuckers it is in this country. Because y'all divided, we stand. Together, we all fall. Y'all divided like a motherfucker. A house divided against itself cannot stand because y'all don't like me. I'm the bad guy. And Uncle Sam is the bad Didn't I tell you bad. about this stuff, Madelka? And listen, and next week, y'all going to have cranberry sauce running all down your motherfucking jaws. You're going to have turkey being stuffed while you're getting fucked. <laughs> and then Santa Claus. Gonna come drop y'all a golden egg, which is gonna be some fucking bombs, bullets, and some fucking concentration camps. And then at January, uh, July 31st, no, uh, January 31st, y'all gonna go get your sweet, go get your food, go get your liquor, get your drink. Oh, oh, I forgot. Okay. A lot of y'all don't do none of that drinking and shit. But that whole January 31st. All right, hold on. Why January 31st? New Year's ain't January 31st. 
All well, right. fuck it. December 31st. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> December 31st. You know what I'm talking about. Hold on. Y'all going to watch the ball go up. Hold you're going to burn up all them goddamn bulls that you're going to need. Okay, I got a mute. I got a mute. Don't mute me. I'm, I'm quiet. Two. I'm quiet. All right. So the two five. No, I'm muted that. Two five two. You're in there. Alquan, right? call back. You call back, Alquan? All right. All right. I'm going to do that in a minute. Two five two. You're in there. Hey, did Mel- Deleton just admit uh, being part of the white man's playbook? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, uh, what is your state your name? Who the fuck are you? What is your name, nigga? First of all, dude, <laughs> chill out. Good name caller, all right? Don't I tell me what to say. You busy putting my name in your mouth. I don't know you. Don't give a fuck about you. So why don't you talk hey. about something that's going to help the people I instead of talking about I me? I just asked a question. I just asked a question, brother. That's all okay, I Okay, I'm sorry. You. Let me back off. Let me calm down. Ask the question again. Medellicon, yeah, I don't told just, you about this, yeah, though. Gentlemen, ask the question again, sir, my you friend. This is Mr. Ben part of the white man's playbook because you said you'd rather work with the two plus fans than with your own fellow brothers and sisters. All right, that's a good this. point. Well, here's the point. You ever heard everything all black ain't good and everything all white ain't bad? Look out in the streets of America right now. I want to know why you niggas attacking me, but you ain't ready to bring down Uncle Sam, okay? Now, I'm with them young white motherfuckers out in this country. Okay, the red, black, green is authorizing and promoting all of this. What we would call, you call it anarchy, upheaval, you know. Or even though the National Guard ain't killing the white people like they would kill your motherfucking ass, even though the National Guard ain't shooting no rubber bullets and bombs at them like they would kill your motherfucking ass, I'm with the white boys because the white boys and girls know that this country should be shut the fuck down. So yes, I would work with them before I work with y'all's ass because y'all don't want to do nothing but just. Sit here and call me the bad guy. <laughs> How you gonna oh, say that? Up, we just you with angel love. Thanks. White man's table. Well, you're a good guy. You're, you're a good guy. Where's Where's Jackie, my good woman from with that good cackalack? Hey, Jackie, I'm getting ready to come to Atlanta. I need to see you, baby, before the war starts. I need to see you. I ain't bullshitting, <laughs> and I ain't playing no tricks either. I'm getting ready to get on this plane ride. Me and you going to get off the line. trying to make Angel jealous. Yeah. Don't make Angel jealous, bro. Come on. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. I'm an African. Right. There's seven women to every man, and every man is supposed to have his quota and his share. So don't get jealous of me because I don't like <laughs> men. And now, Jackie, not I'm going to ask you, baby. When, when can I come see my baby? Jackie? Jackie, oh, Jackie when can I come see my baby? I'm dissatisfied. Why you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> either way, either way. Either way, uh, you had your turn, and there's nothing else left for you with me. Now, I'm Jackie, I'm going to ask you again. When can I come see you before I go out here, baby? I need to go out here and mean what I say and say what I mean, but before I do it, I got to experience heaven before I go. Jackie, can I catch my flight down to see my sweetheart of PRS, Jackie, with the good cackalacky? Jackie, please, sweetheart. That means he's been there already, and she may not even know it. Will you leave her alone? Shut your mouth, angel legal lady. I'm not talking to you. I'm Princess Golden Eagle Lady for your matter. All right, well, I would be upset okay. too if you were flirting in That's my face. That's not the right name for this subject matter right now. Wait, y'all won't even let me talk to Jackie. You know why? Because y'all jealous. Y'all jealous and you're all alone. Each and every one of you motherfuckers is all alone. Even Pianca, he say he's married, right. but you ain't never heard a woman speak on his behalf. You ain't never heard a woman speak on every one of you motherfuckers' behalf. Y'all are some lonely motherfuckers like Uncle Sam. Now, Jackie, I'm going to ask you one more time. I ain't going to be upset if you say no, you don't want to see me. But you know I loved you from the first time you jumped on me. I like resistance. I like a fighter. You a lioness. And you're going to put up a real fight. But if I can get past them arms, you're going to say Mandela Khan. You sound like a straight you. rapist right there. Well, well my yeah, name, you know if you want a revolution, like, right? Okay? I don't care you what I sound like. I like rev- pussy. You can't I do not revolution. like dick, okay? Don't get mad at me. I don't like dick. I love pussy. All right? Okay, if Jackie, you don't, if, if you, you go to the kiss military, that food, your tongue will get caught up in those snags. If you're not in the military and you're not middle class, there's no way you're going to have a revolution. Poor people don't revolutionize nothing. I'll tell you what, now there go the white man's playbook and again. No, so it's not. It's a fact. Now, here's, now, here's, I, look, I, can give you, I can give you every case, even in black countries like Haiti over in Africa, it's always the military or the middle class who takes over a government. No, it's never the poor okay, people. Okay, okay, now, okay, let, okay. the middle class will get poor people to fight with I agree them, with you. I agree with you. I agree never. With you. Look at your history. You. 
Fuck America. Look at Haiti. Look at Africa. Look at all of them. The middle class, people with money and guns, okay. and they like things, they will take over a okay. country in the military. Poor okay. people now, ain't now fighting, what? yo. You're right. They you're absolutely correct. No you're right That's a fucking you're fact. So you need correct. the middle class. So you need educated middle class no, 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 people no, 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 in, no. in the army <laughs> to fight. You don't need no dumbass niggas that don't got no fucking okay. job. It ain't gonna happen. You say a nigga. You talking about just black people? That's where you're wrong. A revolution well, no, ain't got no black people. I'm just saying for your revolution. I'm just saying for your revolution, brother. But hold on, hold on. Let me let me tell you something. Only two percent is the elite class. There's only thirteen percent of middle class. That's eighty five. 85% of us are workers and poor peasants. Even though you say what you're correct, the only people who ever had revolution was the middle class who thought they were going to lose their shit, then they wanted to fight, right? Or the army who didn't like what the uh, ruling class was doing, so they wanted to have a military joshua. But see, here's where you're wrong now. On the planet Earth, when it comes to sustenance, everybody is seeing that the black presidents in Africa and the white presidents in America are cheating and the monopoly and greed. Everybody from the have-nots See, the have-nots has not had a revolution, but this is it. That's what the red, black, and green is for. See, the red, black, green is not for you, middle class. The red, black, green is not for you, no. elite, because y'all got the no, white no. man's playbook. No. You know what they the call the what Medellicon is talking? Folk, what Medellicon is talking is jive. That's what we you're right, it you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, PRK. According to you, you're absolutely right, because you want to keep things just as they are, and you ain't going to have it on your watch. You want a black business. And you want America to stay America, and fuck America and hey, you too. Hey, y'all want right? to tell y'all who has, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. who has the skills to set up a new nation? The middle class, because they have the trades, they're the doctors, and all that shit. So I'm just saying, the military and the middle class is the ones going to have a revolution. If you ain't going to get the no, educated they're not, side, either. they're not going to do shit. No, they're not. Let me no, let me not. let y'all know. Look, look, look at Cuba. Look at look at Haiti. Look at all of them. Money. The upper class has the money. No, yep. no, 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 hold up, but brother, the, 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 the high will not be nothing without the middle class, see, the high is the one, 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 the no, no, because you're going to talk about trade and crops and agriculture and your natural resources. I'm not resources. talking about so trade and it. crop and agriculture. I'm saying well, if well, we well, as a people trade, value something about money, more yo. than we value money, we'll come together. Look how the world is all coming together trying no, to get money, people to No, you need money, together. money, yo. So if yo. we as a people try to get something that we all value more than we value money, that would be to bring us all together. That's all. Even the father, look, the, 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 look, the father of communism, Marx, Karl you can't Marx, argue that. even he didn't, even he could not say that capitalism was a total failure. He had problems what? with it. I'm just saying, brother. For, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I mean, that's just a fact. Go ahead and read the motherfucking manifesto. He did. He said there was some good things about communism. You, I'm just saying, brother. It's gonna have to be some type of system. People ain't gonna get up and volunteer to go and work in no field all day and just go get the same thing. It ain't gonna be that, yo. It's just a I'm fucking saying, in order to get yeah. our people together, we have to value something just as much as we value money. The only thing that's going to bring us together, the catalyst needs to be something as strong and powerful as money is conceptualized to us. Well, well religion. Well, what about religion? religion? What about a religion or a God? It that's where you think we go. Life. Life. L-I-F-E. You have to value, yeah, what she said. You have to value like, and, and value humanity. All of this shit, everybody want to just separate and go kill each other and make everybody else subservient. Like, I, I, I wanted to say something else, um, Alquan, about this revolution shit. When I hear revolution, that should make me think of suicide. I don't want to be in none of y'all's revolutions. Don't include me in y'all revolutions. Well, well, I'm just going to say this like this, baby. Because really like you are misguided yeah, you don't know a revolution is a total, complete change. It has nothing to do with shooting. It has nothing to do with shooting cops, going to kill people. That's the white man's playbook. And I know you're not there yet, but I need to get to Atlanta so I can get you there right quick because you don't know what the fuck a revolution is. You said in Denmark, man. In Delaware. Revolution ain't no shootout. 
Yeah, revolution right ain't no armed struggle going you know, against no government. Like. That ain't no fucking revolution. Well, what is it? What is it? What is it? What you call 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 the overthrow. What you're talking about is the overthrow. The overthrow means you got to have a military Joshua. When you have a revolution, it's a total complete change of a social system that everybody can see that is wrong, and you got to bring masses of people together to shut it down, shut it down to get a redress without firing a goddamn shot. Without firing a goddamn shot. So y'all don't know about no revolution. And this motherfucker named Gary, who keeps trying to tell you, well, oh, yeah, you can have a revolution me. without killing. You can have a revolution without fighting. That ain't no fucking revolution. That is an overthrow in the government, which is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Two minutes. Left on the air. Don't preach no fucking revolution. Don't call in or stay on the phone. Your ass so you can listen to the show. And I assume oh. that uh, Tyrone has the uh, the the uh, broadcast going on 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 YouTube. So. We got about two minutes left on there, and then we're about to go into overtime. Go ahead. Oh, oh that's a beautiful thing. Um, that's a beautiful thing. Keep passing the ball. See how you keep trying to pass the baton to Uncle Sam's dick either like you. You keep trying to pass what? the ball to each other. Uh, I got a question. Hold on. Alcoa, can you mute this guy for a second? I'll ask Piyaki serious question. Really? He ain't got no questions. Piyaki, I'm, I'm in hearing around circulation that they're trying to um, overthrow and try to put Hillary in, in office. Is that a reality possibility? No. No. So they, they're talking about electoral college and this foolishness, like they're going to overturn what has already been done. And they want people to sign petitions. I mean, I kind of really? hope you understand they're trying to start a civil war in this country. All these degenerates that have come to this country are from civil wars. And You're right. And I told you in the 90s that, they lied about the Vietnam War, where all of my friends were killed in those jungles. And then the other ones that got home, they were drug addicts. And then that correlated, correlated with giving the women, their wives, this birth control, and then it broke up families. That's what's been going on, because we fall in for all their crap. And we need to take our rightful stand as supreme beings in on the, on this Some earth broke, and stop fighting so each seven. other and get our lives back on track. We want our stuff back. People can get their life back on track without a lot of extra shit. People need to get their life on track first, then worry about all the extra shit. I guarantee you. know, you, uh, you know, exactly. I'm not trying to worry about all that extra shit. Exactly. You know, Gary, to answer your question. Those electors represent the state. They okay. represent the people of their state. So if you got okay. somebody that's trying to have a general petition where it's representing mm-hmm. people all over the place, they don't have no no they don't have no challenge against a state's will. Can you imagine them electors going back to their state after they've done something like that? You couldn't oh, live there. Four. It'll be chaos. Obama said that he was going to do something with that, and he had eight years, and he did not. So Hillary and the rest of y'all need to go to that Obama guy, who I never voted for him at all, and he's been the worst president, and he's the 43rd president. He said they wrongfully count Grover Cleveland twice, who had an unconsecutive win in the as president from George Washington to now, a president-elect Trump. We had a the elector process. Him. The elector process gets this authority from the twelfth Article Twelve of the United States Constitution, and uh, that's just it. Of course, was the rule. Huh? They're going to go by the Constitution. They're not going to go by some in, in, in strange group out here trying to get petitions. These people are what I call a fifth column. You wonder where in the hell they come up with this sentiment. I believe George Soros is paying some some, uh, main ring leaders in the bunch. You ain't paying every last one of them. But, you know, if you got a a talkative ring leader, they can talk people into doing any damn thing. No one should want that. It will be a civil war. Uh, I think. I think the demonstration These is a are fake. public servants. They're supposed to ask us what do we want and need not tell oh, us what to do. But that doesn't mean that these people that had those couple of votes over, there's the electoral college, and it has to be honored. 
and they should not try to change because it will be a civil war. They don't like when white people call nigga in their face and they get uneasy. They get nigga scared. Is they a royal word. It comes from they goose. No, nigga, that word is no. nigga, nigga, nigga. Get the fuck out of that word, word. Look it up. Look at the ancient word. There's no fucking wow. word for a fucking nigga. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. There's no word, there's no fucking nigga. When they call you nigga, that means you're a fucking nigga. They're not going to be elder. Why don't you, uh... Let me fucking tell me some fucking nigga. And me, where I will shut the fuck out you. I'll start playing like your fucking ass. She an elder. She an elder. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, she's mad about Jamaican connection. Why don't you get Whoopi Goldberg on your show and let her explain where she's going to leave? Well, there that motherfucker go. Hey, you Put know some shit he know ain't going to happen. Ain't no fucking Whoopi Goldberg going to come in BPR. And Gary, watch your goddamn mouth, Gary. Fuck up, you you no good drunk. <laughs> well, i tell you what. I'm going to say this for you. You don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't have sex with women, but yet you ain't got no ethics and morals. Ain't that a good thing that I just showed that shit? No, now, I like to drink, you just I like to smoke up. reefer, you know and I like stop. pussy. You, you, but you... you you don't smoke, you don't drink, you all you can do is cuss and try to be a bully. But all you can do is cuss and rant and rave and try to be a bully behind social media. That's nigga. all you can do, guys. Uh, uh, That's being all you can do. Gary, you are doing your best because that's all you can do. You can cuss up a storm, but I can wild out with the best of them. And I ain't no use to talking to you because it's like talking to a... It's like talking to a box of motherfucking listen, hammers. Listen, you understand? Listen. Go sit back down in your old rocket chair. Go get your alcohol. Get your reef. Oh, get your rocket chair. Right, right. Oh, you rocket go, chair. You motherfucker, you can stand That's in the room fuck. with me. I'm 66. And, and, you and might be 26. You, 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 you can't stand in the room I, with I, me I today. To you understand? You're nothing. You're irrelevant. Nobody wants to be with you. Nobody wants to talk to you. You're nothing. You're mad because I'm relevant. I'll be relevant at 160, no good bitch. I'll be relevant at 160, no good bitch. Nobody knows your name. Outside of this station, nobody ever seen you. They don't know you. They know you ain't shit. I'm telling you that. You're by your fucking self. I'm not arguing with nobody. I'm kicking ass. My job is to kick ass of the neocolonial state. <laughs> kick the Blue Club clan, the Black Club clan's ass. I'm kicking Gary's ass. Because Gary is nobody. Nobody knows Gary except on Talk Real Solutions, and y'all don't know the motherfucker right there. Nobody knows that bitch. He's nothing. You're nothing. That's going in an argument in a format. Fuck what I sound like. I'm telling you what I am, and I am not here to appease near one of you, Uncle Sam's dick eaters. And you know you what you're doing, and I'm exposing your ass and soon to dismiss you. I'm with the young people. Look at all them beautiful young white people who are not degenerate. Them young white people trying to shut this shit down today. You niggas trying to keep it up. Them young white people are not degenerate. They're trying to shut it down. They're trying to shut it down. They are not degenerate. They are not degenerate. They ain't using no weapons. They ain't using no arms. They're not using no fucking AK 47s. They put their motherfucking life on the line to set this shit down. Let me ask they you put a their life on the line. And you niggas want to just sit here and quibble you got while we're the... vomit and do a bunch of fucked up conversation about nothing because you ain't trying to bring nobody together. Let me ask you a question, Al. Where's Joe the Barbarian? Yeah, people... Where the fuck is Joe the Barbarian? Uh, Where's that no good bastard at? Hold on, man. Hold on. It is, hold, on, man. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. Listen, I, I don't know if anybody's doing a conference call tonight. Um, and if not, then the show will stop at 1 o'clock. But, um, Gary, you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself yelling at Angel Lady Love like that. That doesn't make any sense, man. It, I, I mean, I don't I don't know what you're trying to represent here, whatever the case may be. And everybody know Angel Lady Love, what she say and all that kind of stuff. But you sound silly as shit yelling at her like that. Um, but I don't know if, if anybody's doing the conference call tonight. Um so, uh, I guess it'll end at one. Right, you know, so the spirit kind of got Thank you so much, Tyrone. I just don't like to like spread the nonsense about a nigga is royal. So what? You can't talk to her like that, you no good dick-eating bastard? Shut the fuck up. One of her lines dropped off. Hold up, hold up. 
Hey, I'll call you. You want to say, uh, Pianchi? Now, let me ask you something. You got all these people out on the streets wanting to put Hillary Clinton in office by higher like means. That. Now, but well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, suppose she does go into office. Now, suppose okay. the next day you have people out on the street wanting to take her out of the office. Where does it ever end? White power is going down with his down up for Hillary Clinton. Fuck them both. Fuck them both. I mean, all right. Yeah. Let me answer the question. Paul I think um, obviously it never ends. And it's just kind of crazy, though, because to me, they shouldn't even be protesting. Trump won. Let it be. I, I agree. It's great time. Yeah. That's how I feel. I do one. It must be illegal. They don't understand the procedures. No one talks correctly. And they don't want to listen and they don't want to learn. They must be illegal. Learn the in the street. Our collaborators with connected. illegal. In the goddamn streets, not on the phone. Not in the school, oh, not in the oh, church, oh, not at the job. You're going to learn in the motherfucking street. That's where you're going to learn. Medellicon, how, how many times do I have to tell you about that? How fast do four as years As many times as your son and children don't even listen to your ass. Your own children don't listen to your ass. Shut up. It seems like he's going to worry about anything. It should be about what he could do while he's in office, not getting her in office and him out. Because that's like... So far from happening. There was no right now. He's already uh, kind of like a politician. Uh, falling back on what he said he would do. Exactly, because I mean, you have to understand these campaigns are run just like a high school campaign. In my lifetime, at least it's a lot of elections that went like that. Um, But Al Gore, nobody believed that uh, he he lost. I don't even think he thought he lost. He won the popular vote too, and that's why but he, President he didn't Obama really fight said he was going to bring that to the attention of he legislation. Did fight it. And in the that was, wait a minute, not. that was the one who went and they held the thing up because they wanted to keep counting votes. Wasn't that that election? But the difference yeah, in this one is that the, after the vote, the people September went to the street. Night. After Al Gore and Bush, y'all waited days and days and months before you found out some shit. This is altogether different. This is altogether different. That's when they kept saying it was Florida, it was Florida, and then Jeb Bush did it to help his brother win. I mean, it's always. But you blacks didn't go to the streets then. You didn't go to the streets, and the whites. Wait until right after the vote, and they in the streets. This is different. Focus this is on the people, man. Nobody care about the streets. You really want that one Mankind made implosion of they the two towers um, and the other two facilities, one in Pennsylvania. Uh, appoint four Supreme Court justices. That's a, a possibility. That's something that he's going to have to do. I don't know how many, but is they retiring? At least two. Is it a vacancy? Then someone die? Yes, they killed them. Oh, oh Lord! I'm not one of them. Dick Gregory conspiracy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> when they told them to stop counting those chads in the top of 2002, they were totally out of order. They all should have been fired. They're only supposed to interpret the Constitution of the United States of America, not tell us what to do. The Declaration of Independence uses my tenets, and it clearly says the consent of the governed, we the people. But more emphatically, though, we have the Electoral College, and President Obama did nothing as he promised he would in eight years. But cause this additional... Well, one thing I like about Pianchi is at least Pianchi can recognize that Dick Gregory... It's full of shit. Oh, yeah. Why you just oh, me too. I mean, some <laughs> stuff he says, it, it seems really incredible, but you, you have to, I don't know. I don't think, you know, this, like, do I think about his age or, you know, I think sometimes people get off on sitting back thinking the crazy shit and then coming to everybody else like, ooh, look, this is what shit is. Some well, he was like, yeah, you got to People got to get paid. They I think that Gregory uses his age every now and then when he's wrong. So then that way he says, okay, well, I'm an old man, you know. Yeah. Do you, do your homework. do you investigate what he brings forth? That's the key. 
You can't complain. No, I don't do that. He makes a statement. Do your homework. Okay, Alcorn. What do I you? Do. How do you feel That's about when he says that? What about that? when he says that um, that uh, Jesse Jackson had uh, Martin Luther King killed? You believe him when he says that? Well, I doubt if he had him killed, but it looks like Jesse Jackson could have been a, complicit. He played a, play a role in that. No, it don't look like it. But, but I'll tell you this. Uh, I, when Dick Gregory says that Malcolm X was shot from above, that's when my man is definitely full of shit. Because the autopsy shows that uh, Malcolm X got blasted in the heart. That was the fatal shot. Nothing from above. No witnesses ever said anybody got shot from above. It was all on the front stage, lower level. Fatal so, shot how many shots? No, it's just to get Farrakhan off the hook. How many shots? Is that what he said? I didn't hear that. I just only heard him talking yeah, he about said the, that. Uh, and I asked him about it, shot. and he said he called me a nigger or some shit like that <laughs> and said I'm responsible for uh, getting the autopsy results out in the first place. How dare you question me? What? That's how they do. Yeah, that's what Dick Gregory said. I'm gonna try to get him on the yeah, show. He's he like no one hey, can question and all that. You can question him. That's like a fucking slave. So don't question me. Accept everything. Like, good boy. Well, he's trying to Ain't get that? paid. Yep. He's fucking up the church's money by telling on telling on him. Hey, my you know like, and what old people say. You calling me a liar? Videos. Calling me a liar. <laughs> he like, man, you fucking with the church's money. Trying to get man, you can tell these videos. He says something like that. Because we all know the nation of Islam killed Malcolm X, so why is he trying to change the narrative? I don't like that. Because he could get paid. Well, and he's it's like a market for confusion. No, I thought he said, it like he, uh, what's his name? Farrakhan admitted it in one of his little things. I don't know what you call him, his little lectures he was giving. And I'm going to tell you what, yeah. our problem, and we deal with our problems. The way we're supposed to, or something like that, and deal with your own problems. See, I this is why somebody let that, that window down. The show before. They realize that ignorance is bliss, and that they're going to capitalize off it. It's like if our people don't want to get together, our people want to be involved in this drama and this conspiracy nonsense. I might as well capitalize off of it. That's what people are doing. Look at some the other TV. Look at all these. Uh, Buy your uh, become uh, sovereign and all this stuff. All that mumbo jumbo is just getting you to spend your money. We idiots let these degenerates tell us that they can do our rights. How can some degenerate give us civil rights when we're born sovereign? I I agree with you because (laughs) that's the problem. Keep fighting over words. But you know how they do that, Agent Lady Love? They do it with something called a gun. I think that if you start I studying the Civil Rights Act and the Act is temporary, so far, uh, a lot of that shit is, is, is not true, is bullshit, is false, and that's why I can't understand people that, like, your, your whole life is conspiracy theory. At some point, you have to grow up out of that. Like, real Because they don't have to work. There's no such thing that, as conspiracy theory. Is, is theory going to prove a lot of that this stuff. is what it's a conspiracy the theory does. The conspiracy theory allows you to live the rest of your life all fucked up and lazy because somebody is out to get you and make you this way. No such thing. You know thing what I'm saying? Conspiracy That's theory. why people love we conspiracy theory. We had our own stores. It's trying to blame your own downfall on. When your downfall is like probably your own fault, but the conspiracy theory is making you types of classes that we could be able to have our own businesses. No one knows how to even sew a hem anymore, yet alone cook Sovereignty. The, rich. You got to understand, my people, sovereignty is a meaningless word. It's meaningless. Whether you're born with it or not, it doesn't matter. Okay, then it's meaningless for you. Talk about yourself. I you can't talk no about right myself. To I'm talking, to, I'm talking to the audience don't now. Don't give the definition of it. You have no right to say that. Say yeah, I didn't give the definition no of it as well. No meaning for you. I understand. No meaning for you. And just like I understand the definition of the word, and I understand that it applies 
what to we the call rulership. A low life Only the living. king is sovereign. That's why I said it's meaningless here because we're not under a monarchy. We're Hello? under a Hello? republic. We are the so we don't use and sovereignty. The queen. Hello? Oh, my God. And the high priest. Okay. I agree please to disagree, Queen. Stop it. Please stop spewing your <laughs> lies. Please bring something that's tangible and that's that's of goodness to the table. It's sickening to keep All you have to do is look at the definition, Queen. Yo, she's telling you, man. She said it's, it's That's okay. Incredible. She could do that. <laughs> I still know what I know. I'm not offended. You shouldn't be because when a liar, I mean, when you're telling untruth God. and you only have untruths in your in your heart and mind, that saddens me. We can manifest with our words. That's why we should oh. not be using the stupid. Well, you can manifest this AK. Well, I don't I don't believe in manifesting with my words. I manifest with action. I believe a man with ah, character right on. in his act, in his right work. I don't hey, believe let me in that. words. Let me say something. You said so, so, right? And think about this. A lot of people get fucked when when people say "I love you" and there's no action. And then when the actual speak more than his words, they say, "Well, I thought you love you. Well, you know, if I'm not really displaying it, then really I don't love you. That's how a lot of people get fucked too Do much. Do you know what love you is? You get fucked by the wordplay. But when a person actually show more than what they say, love. then you talk it. As I tell you, we are not getting nowhere because we, we we sit with fan size when people tell us stuff. We don't go by what they really do it. That's the most dangerous thing. You don't know I don't go by wordplay. You've never had Words will love. screw you up. Words you will lead you in a circle. Love. Words you will mess up. Love. Fuck up your brain. And love has conditions. Love has conditions. Is lie about nah, un- not, not love. Not I'm at. People, people kill you in the art of I love you. We got some well, sick motherfuckers out And here. they never loved you, darling. No, no, no. Trust me, they don't love you. Because people do stupid shit in the time of uh, fucking love. What will you Father, do? What the fuck are you talking about? What love you? That's do? a nonsense. The that's is a solution. That's the emotional response. And that's why I people keep losing every time. You keep losing? My sister... I understand your path, and I, I don't have nothing against it. If it works for you, it works for you. But you got to understand that what you're spewing is not developed. It's more like <clears throat> elementary school logic. you got to elevate it. Yes, but if this is elementary school and you can't dig it, then you really got a problem. And how no, I just said I understand. I just said I understand, you Queen. That? How dare you? Queen. I'm not a queen. Queen, I said I understood you. I'm just saying I that you can Golden expound Eagle on Lady. it. That's what I You am. can develop you it. I have the right to try you, to ignore me. Queen overrules the princess. Speaking, you shall find not going to be open unto you. I'm just saying you could develop whatever it is your craft is or whatever your is your knowledge. We're never in a point to where we know it all. We always have to expand on what we have. That's another problem our people do. We romanticize and take the uh, knowledge that we have from way back when, and we don't build upon it. Everybody else builds upon yeah. their knowledge. That's what Make technology sure is. That. We need to start Make doing sure that. you do that. You have no right to tell me to do that. You really I'm, don't. I, I, yeah, yeah, it was a I suggestion. I just bring facts out here, facts, truth, and information. I don't force but it on see, you. The thing about facts, queen, you have to, or princess, or princess, whatever you wanted me to call you, queen, Golden Eagle Lady. you Golden have to be able to back My your, you got back. to have evidence. We we deal with scientific method around here. We're not just going to spew things out of our mouth because they feel good. You have to have something to back your rationale. What have I said that's making you go off on a tangent about me? Oh, I'm, I'm not. You're. What are you? You are to? doing a red herring right now. Do we want to stay on topic, or do you want me to expound on you? I'm confused. You have no right. To oh. Do you not know me. You don't know me. Are we going to stay me. on topic? It never I was about you, Queen. Know You're me. deflecting. You're deflecting. Let's get back. Me. Let's get back so to the topic. You're deflecting because you don't know okay. yourself, and you want to come out of yourself. To try and find fault with everybody else, and you're not gonna bait me, Queen. When you're ready to talk about the topic, I'm I'll not talk your queen. with you. 
And the bottom okay. line is deal with you. Okay? Thank you for listening. You're welcome, Queen. See, it's that easy, man. We have to understand that this stuff we get out of these books and off these uh, extraterrestrial sites no and all this stuff. No words can fully describe you. It's no pseudo. words can fully describe anybody on this phone. Exactly. You can't describe nobody just by one word. No words will fully describe any person in the world. You can't. You run out of words. This is a fact. You can't call him off. That's a... why you cut him off. That's why you cut him off. Oh, I don't know him back. I just jumped on the line. I had the phone down for a minute. We're okay. kind of busy tonight. We're kind of busy tonight. It was fun. Sorry, how was it? Oh, wow. I really love trying to kind of thought. But point being, we have to we have to steer away from all these. This it's information out there, but we got to steer away from these alien sites, these conspiracy theory sites. And all of this information that has nothing to do with the price of rice of China, the most important thing is having morals, building up your character, building up the character of the people around you, supporting your immediate family. And then once you have that taken care of, you, you uh, branch out and provide charity for those around you who need it. You work with people around you when you have time, but make sure you always take care of home and stuff first. And then as you do for people, see, we think just telling people or giving people information is enough. Now, that's enough for this broadcast, but as an individual and human beings and as a collective, however you want to put it, we have to do action. A man is judged, and and when I say man, I mean mankind, is judged on their actions. A mankind is the degenerate. Uh Oh, Oh my God. I understand, yes. I am a human being, a universal melanin rich Brotherhood of Right. Brotherhood of man and fatherhood of God. I'm with you, you with that. No brotherhood of man and fatherhood of God. Pronouns. First you're talking about you, then you changed it to we, but you never talk about the I, you. You've got so much to tell other people to do. Write it down for yourself. It's about it's, you, I don't sir. have to write it down. You Queen, it's no in my heart. To try to get on this phone. I'm already. I'm already. I already do all that stuff we be talking about. I've been on that shit. Uh, I've been left all that conspiracy theory stuff alone, and that's why I, I agree with you. And you know, you not growing, you not studying, if you still thinking this crazy shit that has not never been confirmed, and it's been four or five, six. Sometimes for some people, it's ten, twenty, thirty years they've been believing this crazy shit that's never been confirmed. I'm with you. You got to take care of yourself first. Take care of your family. I mean, if there's time left over, then go try to save the world. Or for some people, try to save the race. Or, you know, I, I don't get that shit. It's, it, people, that's why I'm like, I can't do that revolutionary shit. My family ain't hey, straight to the point where I can go be a revolutionary and die for y'all no good asses. Hell no. Nah. And then they not going to do nothing for your family once you're gone. Man, you gone. Man, you got to be middle class. For the, you got to be in the military for a revolution. About, about, if you're about not middle class it. and you're not in the army, you ain't doing no revolution. Just that simple. Hey, you know, you know, the funny, you know, the funny thing, about it? a lot of people that that even fantasize the conspiracy, theory, and if it's true or not, I tell black people that if it's true, I say, what the fuck are you gonna do about it? If you want to throw that oh, permit, they, 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 they get stagnant, they get silent, they get quiet. They say, well, I can't. They say, why waste your time? If, if, if it's out there and there's stuff you do, why the fuck you keep reiterating? That's what when I ask, what the hell are you gonna do about it? That's where you get the silence. You have to be you get, a blessing you get to for all nations. You, you have and to. And now, count but for action. That's all. You have to do real time stuff. Do you have you ever just took some kid you see hanging around the store and just let them go in the store and buy something? You know, it, 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 the the look on their face, like it, it's just it's powerful. Letting them know somebody care about them. Like well, first yeah, of all, hanging on the corner good. and stuff. Kids oh my goats. God! Uh, can I finish kids my thought, Queen? Look it up. First meaning of the word "kid" is okay. A young right. I got you. Okay. I understand. Oh. I, I okay. got a lot more to say. Uh, so to let me know. Know. understand what I got to say. A minute ago, you were talking it. to me. I have I've taught children, and I've done very well, and I assure you, they would have never forgotten me. 
Mm-hmm. Okay? I even passed the scrutiny of the FBI to do so. Okay? Okay. So what I'm saying we got to be proactive in these streets. We got to start showing people that may not even feel that somebody is care about them commit suicide. We got to let our people know that we care. And you can't just tell somebody you care. Like Gary said, you got to show them. We got to start doing things for one another. All our people never like, committed suicide. Is there medications that makes them want to do that? If you listen right, to the commercials, you, you will hear. Them all. Those are, Sister, are you going to attack me None the whole show? Man- that's what you're going to do, my dude. She, 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 she uh, wanted to say that the, we are the king's rule of this country and that we the people make dictation of this country and this, that, for Maria, we do not. You know what I'm saying? I know. I respect her. She's a female <laughs> Mandela kind. But, um. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. She's the worst one in the Mandela kind. Mandela kind runs his mouth. He can't. Shut the hell up. He can't. Shut the hell up. You know what I'm saying? Thank like, you for the commercial. Once again, you're irrelevant. I don't even talk about you. <laughs> Thank you for the commercial. Listen, you guys won't be hearing me for a while. I just want to say good night. Nice talking to you guys. Take it easy. Peace. Our schools are not raggedy. We no. had extra right. schools before you were born. And when we uh, and we apply ourselves to the point to where we reach out to the children, you got to understand all these problems we have with mass incarceration and things of that nature. We got displacement, men out of work. That's if we work on our children, but if we work on our children and we fix our children to be successful, then that will die out because we, the new generation coming in won't have to deal with mass incarceration. They'll be ready. I think basically what I'm saying, we've forgotten about our children so much that, and we focus on these other things that we're not giving them everything we need to do, because, like, People just one quick example. People they lay down and have sex. That's what it is. It's no longer a conjugal connubial love coitus copulation. The, the problem with this country is that like you Negroes are for the war on drugs and the war on terrorism. If it wasn't for the war on drugs and the war on terrorism, you wouldn't be facing concentration camps and war, what we call judge, jury, and execution in the street. Y'all with the war on terrorism, you with the war on drugs, and your ass is going down as long as you allow that genocide to go forth in all of your names. Don't try to hide, motherfuckers. All of y'all love the war on drugs. You love the war on terrorism, which is anti-black, anti-African. The schools are the concentration camps, and so are the senior citizen residences. Concentration camps. We have to wake up and take our rightful place. We keep settling for this degeneracy, and we're above it. It's so old. under our feet, not above us. Well, get your AK ready, Mandel Khan. If you don't want to go into the camp, they're going to say, hey, Mandel Khan, sir, it's time for you to come to these camps. And you, you come and we blow your brains up. And Mandel Khan is very small. Yes, are yes sir, yes, sir. I am the Republic of Africa. I will come to you because so I do not blood in blood privilege. I am a blooded person. I will come to you, Glary. Please don't shoot me in the head, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> And, and they put the cap, and they draw my into the cap. And once they put the cap, they go right to that guillotine, drop that guillotine, and off your head. I said, God damn. Man, was a old, no good bastard, but he died unrighteously. Look at train stations and bus stations. Those are concentration camps. You're so, everybody doesn't even see when it's right in front of their own eyes. And you take we don't want to see them. There are hospitals, nosocomial, N-O-S-O-C-O-M-I-A-L. You go into those hospitals, you come out with something you didn't have when you came in. Sister, you never avoid a choice. The hospitals got a lot of diseases in it. Organs, organs, well, that's where they sick people go, for, you think? For study, for stabbing and gunshot wound studies. They're taking your organs, organs, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, we got a new caller. We got a new and caller. And now they have the artificial uh, Unknown uh, caller, you're on the air. January 2015. Can you hear me? Unknown uh, caller. Yes. Hi, Who's can this? you hear me? Who's this? Hello. Hello. Yes. Who's this? Yeah. No, wait, Who's it's this? me, not you, whoever that guy is. First of all, Mo Light, you can't buy a break. You've been trying oh, to be oh, nice. This? And... Is this a, is this a Gigi? No, this is Lady Aspirations for Fundamentals Serenity. 
<laughs> Here we go. How you doing? What? How can I shed some light on you, sister? I just wanted to call and say you're really hanging in there, man. I'm, I'm hoping that you can get through this. You can't win. You've been so polite and so courteous, and you're just getting hammered, man. Oh, but once again, I am not Judy. I am Lady Aspirations for <laughs> Fundamental Security. That's an acronym. Okay. Lap. What does that mean? I'll give you exactly. Okay, Lady Fundamental. What is your last uh, testament? What is it that you want to see, Miss Fundamental? What the fuck <laughs> do you want to see happen? Lady Aspirations. <laughs> well, I want to see. Ma- Mass, uh, uh, Your Majesty Mandela Khan hook up with Jackie. And oh, then... yes. I love you, baby. I love no. you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's about it. I love you. Just sitting you here got enjoying. Some good I'm telling you. Because I know Jackie is a beautiful woman and she's sweet. I don't know what. She just got a little mean streak, but I like it like that, you know? But the thing is, is you and your aspirations, I know it goes farther than that. Now, we see the condition of the country, Lady Aspirations. And you see the young and the restless, the young and the white people, they're ready to shut the country down. Why isn't it that you and your aspiration and me and my aspiration, what is wrong with us? We're going to watch football. We're going to watch the preachers of L.A. We're going to watch Love and Hip. We're going to watch, you know, the BET Awards. Go ahead, brother. Mr. Pimpmatic, go ahead. Come on, baby. When when are we going to do this now, Miss Aspiration? Because I like what the white people do. Behind Lorraine, Lady Angel Love, and then there's um somebody else, and of course Jackie, of course. I'll wait my right. turn. I'll wait my turn. I'm sure you're worth it. Your man. turn is now. I'll shut my mouth. But your turn is now. What do you want to do, Mama? <laughs> Come on, talk to me. <laughs> Damn. Coke is a hell of a drug. <laughs> 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 it's really happening. This is so funny. We went from trying to, I'm trying to share some jewels with the people, get us organized to some extent, at least have them doing little amounts of charity. Mm-hmm. Like you see a little young brother or sister, you see some tennis shoes because they're getting tapped on and in your neighborhood close to you. Go to mm-hmm. the phone, buy them a little $50 pair, $50 pair of shoes or something that look way better than what they got. Or you know some kids that may have parents that's involved in the drug game and, you know, they really ain't buying them clothes and stuff. If you got nieces or nephews or something of that nature, they don't wear everything all the time. They run out of clothes. I mean, they run, not run out of clothes, but they can't fit those clothes no more. Look around, shop around and see if you can find something you could donate to them so they can have some cool clothes to wear instead of having to share clothes. I knew people that had to share clothes, you know what I'm saying? Like, my friends used to have to share clothes with his little brother and stuff, but when his little brother had to wear it, it was looking like his big brother was supposed to be wearing it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had good people, so, like, my mom made sure the clothes I had that I couldn't fit no more, we gave them to the little brother and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I used to let the older brother, because that was my partner, you mm-hmm. know, wear some of my outfits and stuff. It was just like... If I got it, you got it. We got to huh. get in that mentality. We got to really look out for one another. I think we think support only goes like materialistic or mon- monetarily, but support is also mental. You know what I'm saying? We got to support each other mentally. We can't let each other give up. And I think that's that's all about character building. We got to get back to that. If we're not going to focus on that, then we ain't got no chance. We oh, won't have a before. chance if they keep giving the food that has no seeds in it and bringing all this stuff <laughs> to the country with all their diseases and hey, in it. We need to get the food back in order. That's what we need to start with. She's just going to do that. I offended her some way, somehow. I don't know how but I did. Oh, man, what did she Everything do? I say, she was going to counteract to it. it up. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Smith, look it up. Seeds of Deception, S-E-E-D-S Maybe of Deception. The clothes are messed up all over the world. The food is messed up. The Mexicans said in the 70s they're going to defecate and urinate on our food, and they're doing it. That's oh, when they recall like it was at the top of this year for E. coli. That's defecation. That's when someone sister, has a fecal when you realize- from a human or mammal. 
when you realize you're the master of your faith and controller of your destiny, you will be so That's much why better off. Go- Supermarket that has clean food that the people have washed their hands be put before they put them out on the shelf. All this stuff. What is a supermarket? Go in any Kmart. That's why they're closing because all that crap that comes from you know. If you have a Chinatown, go in their stores. It smells. You can smell their fungus. All of the flus come from China. You're not aware of that? I investigated that years ago. You know why we don't understand what you're saying, sister? Because we don't what go about those places. Because shop. you don't want to listen. I don't care. What about you, no, because we don't go there. Shop. And I happen to be a sentinel. You got a what about the ginseng, angel lady love? Can we take ginseng? All that Her name crap, is Mrs. Mandela. All that crap. Look at the, <laughs> look at what the root looks like. Oh. All that crap. I'm trying to tell you something. Look it up. All of their stuff anymore, especially from China, has problems what telling about their the own tea? children. They say they got good tea. They, they got good tea. tea. No, we don't take we don't good tea. Are you really trying all facts? Their own children. They're all up in Africa building roads and in Jamaica. You think they're not bringing their the women. The problem is that Jamaica. With Jackie, I think that's the problem. Angel Lady Love, they know life, they have one, please. DNA and RNA is not foolproof, oh. not our fingerprints. And I assure you, when they're doing the fingerprinting, they use lead paint. Okay. Yeah, but the thing is, people have a story. <laughs> and, like, I was saying, a lot of people can't contest with what you're saying because I'm pretty sure we don't shop there. And you have a, you're never void a choice. So, Remember, you are the master of your faith and controller of your destiny, meaning that it's upon you. You're going to have to suffer the consequences of whatever choices you make. Excuse so me. If you you are healthy, going to suffer the consequences of any choices you make. Please use you do the right. woman, more Talk like. about self. Huh? Talk about self. You don't know. I don't me. know. I want to buy. Oh. I want to give her a hug, a flower. I'm, I'm waving the white flag. So you lose don't see it. correlating and I putting give up. those pronouns oh. in your conversation. Talk oh, about I can see, Queen. Huh? Talk about your, and I've told you I'm not a queen. I so apologize. So <laughs> That's that not Gary? my name. <laughs> No, that's very smart, Eddie. Nice. And it's in your house. You think people are going to keep letting you do I'm that? You, what? Baby. I, I'm a sentinel. Oh. No, Brian. man. Brian, you know? She's trying to sing her down off the off the, off the, off the <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> when I see you cry again. Oh, everybody's trying to force somebody <laughs> on me. Baby. No. I make statements. I bring oh. facts, truth, and information. I don't tell you what to do. Oh. But if you're going to misnomer the word Angel kid Lady Love, tell them what to do. I will bring it to your attention because we don't have control of our own dictionary. Tell them what to and do, we're the Angel ones Lady came up Love. With all these words. Oh. If degenerates were to teach us how to speak, we would. You want to be... your mouth, no? We'd be oh. speaking oh. in and growl. Yeah, that's the uh, uh, Chef Rob and Yashua didn't show up tonight. <laughs> Oh, they I wait for that after call. Up for a minute. Yeah, why don't you why don't you open it up, Mo Light? I can't. Oh. My phone wasn't even charging. My little uh my little rascal had the phone on to charge. Me. <laughs> and that phone gonna die in a minute. Oh man! If I do, or uh, if I get it on, I could probably get it on, but I leave it on for about an hour. And if they, if they, they play that silence, I just breathe <laughs> off with the silence. How did Jackie do it? Yeah. She, uh, she dropped. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, Gigi. Have I, I listened to that, uh, the tail end of that conversation, you, Joshua, and uh. Chef Rob, what happened? Or you, Mama's boy, and uh, Yash, what happened? And uh, you, what happened? Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was getting good. And then I think Sarge must have uh, woken up out of his sleep and said, damn, uh-huh. my computer's on, and cut it off. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember that one, but yeah. thank you. Well, it was getting good. Mm. But Chef Rob, 
I did this show because of him, but see, he didn't uh-huh. want to call up. He was defending himself tonight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that well, always happens. Feel like see, when, people, see, when people can't interrupt, interrupt you when you uh, give answers, they don't like to call in and debate. Uh, <laughs> right. So you did the show just so you could have the last word, basically. Well, so I can answer yeah. without getting spoken uh-huh. over, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. I, I still want, um, uh, is it Mr. Solution to call in? I still owe that dude an apology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please tell me where I'm going. Wow, Lorraine's been calling for him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, do you have to call that? never calls my show anyways. <laughs> what, what did you do to Mr. Solutions? I came a little too hard on him. I think the whole oh, thing. Oh, the jokes just themselves. I'm sure he would have been very appreciative if you had being single hard on him. And, you know, all that. Yeah, and he thought, yeah. I guess he didn't think I was college educated, I guess. And, you know, I kind of threw that in his face. And uh-huh. I told him just because he has a degree in whatever it is, it's not a degree in love. And maybe uh-huh. if he wasn't trying oh, to damn. quantify love, damn, if he wasn't was trying to quantify damn. love, maybe you would have a better chance oh. at it. You need to just listen because uh-huh. it don't work like that. You know, uh-huh. mm. you can pull out figures and all that stuff. Love don't operate like that. It's an emotion. Uh huh. Wow. Like, Ooh. But it was just funny how he tried Oh, go ahead No, he does it to everybody he, he starts out being polite But it's not natural It's very forced And then he'll start making comments about your intelligence He's trying to fish around right. He's he trying to fish around, see how much school you got Then he'll try to fish around, see how much money you got But the, at the end of right. the day He really just wants to be alone with Sarge anyway And he's just, you know, <laughs> like Biden <laughs> Try to make that move. I call him Misty. <laughs> Misty Solutions. <laughs> like a stripper's name. Yeah, my man is pretty airy. <laughs> what? No, he is pretty arrogant. Arrogant. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. He never calls my show for some reason. I can't I think imagine. it's because people are afraid that they're going to have to get put to the test. And they're going to have oh, to so, answer. Don't <laughs> soup yourself up. Yeah, you like the... You like the uh, get them hard questions. <laughs> you like to put people in corners, make them fight their yeah. way out. But it's hard. Gotta do that. Hard. So he calls all the time. Yeah. Well, hmm. Sarge gets you like, I mean, Sarge. I was gonna give Sarge this one thing. He doesn't deflect, but what he does is like get irate. So like whatever he's saying gets muffled. Uh oh, uh, somebody Wait. don't want that to be heard. Somebody in the wind. I hope they say. They traveling from one galaxy to another. <laughs> Angel lady love. <laughs> I think that was Heading back to Alpha Centauri right about now. But she gotta shed her skin first, so that'll take a couple of weeks. <laughs> Gonna mess me up. Oh, how we be getting caught Are you up talking like about that, me, though. young lady? Yes. So do you I am. I am Lady Aspiration. Okay. So I don't give a d blast who you entity. are. You don't talk about me like that. I don't do that to you. <laughs> so you better dig yourself. It was you all in fun, Queen. She was serious. One of the yeah. first ones. You gotta dig it to dig screaming. it. When when it, can when you take a joke? Starts happening. And and you'll you'll no, know she's what having I'm a bad about. day, man. You're right. She was she was like, I don't, I don't grab her, give her the mean, biggest hug of her life. Just hug me. her and let you her talk and kick and scream feel. and everything else. Okay. She okay. needs a hug. Can I give you a hug, okay. Queen? Can I, I give you a you phone hug? Me. I don't want you near me. Can I give you a phone mm. hug? <laughs> Can I just tell you I care? Can you accept that? Heck no. Is that too because the bottom oh, line is that's just oh. that's that's just rhetoric. No, it's I'm not. Really it's coming from the heart. I, I don't need nobody playing games with me. Oh, I'm not playing games. Want to know you. something that I know? Oh, no. 
You better okay? watch that, huh? Yes, I do. You ask me, because I only come with facts, truth, and information, and anything I bring I don't care is, about facts, truth, and information right and now. What I, I care about is sure you it, understanding I that I care correct. about you. Okay? Dig yourself, okay? I didn't hear nothing you said. Dig yourself. Oh, one, 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 I care one, about one, you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's too hard for you, it's too hard of a pill for you to swallow. A brother yeah, loving her sister you're just caring about her regardless, mouth. never seen her nothing. Put it in your mouth. Put it in yeah. your mouth, okay? You're not used to that. Whoa, whoa, See, that's whoa, that real. That's that real. <laughs> you're singing I can put it to. in your mouth. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's very different. I listen to everything you say, and doing. that's why I feel for you. And sister. he thinks he can keep getting away with misnomers and disrespect. Expecting a lot of stuff from Mandela Conner to you. You know I will go there. Everything you say to me, because I am a mama, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother, it goes to yours, too. Okay? You're talking about your own. Exactly. So and then I care to... about my own. Did you get that? Benjamin? I must you care about my own. I must love my own. Okay? We will go there. All right? You better dig like it. Like I said. It. Somebody. I don't Have understand. Angel Lady Love. Angel Lady Love. Angel Lady Love. Did you beat your kids with an extension cord? Oh, damn. See, <laughs> buddy. And if I Hi. would, I wouldn't even say such a thing. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. Okay. You see, you of course you can. She's old school. You know, like, you know they, take their, they take swishers, extension cords, and they want to beat the hell out of this child. Hey, you know this, Happy? She don't, don't want to speak the truth there, and, though. And I don't come trying to judge you. I only give you back when you have gone overstepped your boundary, Okay. And this is the God damn ass. Oh, up the whole line. Mm. How do you feel you know, knowing no matter what you say, I'm still going to love you? And then we're still nope. suffering. No matter what you say, I'm going to still love you. How about that? So you could talk to you, Blue. Oh, that's that's so not going to, you cannot stop me from loving you and caring. So continue. That's beautiful, Mandela man. Mandela Khan, load up your artillery, Mandela Khan. <laughs> load up your car. <laughs> um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say this. <laughs> I, just, where, hey, I where apologize. You from, where, ah. where, you, where, you, where you swept up from under the hood of the car? Where, what the hell is going on? <laughs> there's there's one in this plan. I can just sit here and don't say a word for a half hour, hour. I can get in where I fit in, and don't miss a beat. Everything's good. Everything's good. Good. Guess what? Train yourself who for the, silence. Who, who would have thought? Who would have thought that we would be witnessing this great spectacle today? Who would have thought that? And guess what? The decision's not in the people. It's time oh. to vote in the streets, and the people oh. are going to vote in the streets. And there's not a damn thing anybody can do to stop it. Now I know what y'all are trying to do. Y'all trying to wait and go get the cranberry <laughs> sauce and your turkey and shit. <laughs> Sit there. Real comfortable and get real fat. But, hey, Melis, you, 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 you cut me off. You cut me off. Angry lady, you cut me off. You cut me off. You cut me off. Listen, listen. So he could give the number so we could continue. It's going to cut off in 10 minutes. Mandela can't call over the other number. What's the number? I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm telling you, my my carrier won't allow me to have any conference call. Uncle Sam. Stop paying Uncle Sam. What? My carrier won't allow me to go to a conference uh, call. They get Metro, oh, Metro, Metro, Metro PCS. Metro PCS. Yeah, well, look at the number. Look at the number, the number. No, no. I can't go to the conference call with an extra uh, password number. They won't allow it because they say you it's know, an you know illegal you do, call. Mandela? Mandela, you got an Android? You got an Android phone? Yeah. Phone? yeah. yeah. Uh, download the uh, free conference call HD app. And then you can put the number in, and then you can uh, do it that way. As long as you got oh, Wi-Fi see? or unlimited data. <laughs> I, I got unlimited uh, data and all that shit, yeah. But the thing is, is that right now, I have to uh, get up. You know, the early bird catches the worm, and I can only have so much. And you guys will go to 2, 3 in the morning. <laughs> that's a late night for me, and that's I got me a beautiful African woman. That you gotta yeah, all right. Yeah, you okay. got to go to bed, uh, Bedtime. I can't go you back and forth with you guys. I know. No, 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 no. You no, got to no. turn off that phone too. I have to save some of my energy because you got to realize I'm in the middle of the Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam. Hey, I didn't know Angel was phone. African. 
No, Angel Eagle is indigenous to this land. Now, don't try to disrespect her. Don't you ever call her a queen again. Do you understand? <laughs> don't you ever call her a queen Sorry, again. Yes, sir. She's not. She's not. She's, she's an a, a, she's a <laughs> oracle. She's an oracle. Ah. She's, she's, let me tell you She's this. your queen. Hey, she's my everything. She's a matriarch. Yo, she's she's trying to get her back. I agree. <laughs> no, she's my everything. See, you don't know what I know. Oh. And you got to dig it to dig it. But if you could dig it to dig it, you know. Angel Lady Love, I think y'all going to get back together. Oh, good time. Hey, I love We never were separated. We never were separated. Don't you hear what you call me? She don't call me what she call y'all. She called me something much different, and you got to go speak it. Oh. And listen to it one more time. And you'll oh. know why I'm elevated above you little, little minions. So elevated. You know. <laughs> All right, hey, uh, uh, lady uh, aspirations. Here's what I gotta say to you. <laughs> now listen, you got a lot of stuff with you, but I know you too. I already know about you. You're a little number, you know that. You got a lot of stuff going on. With you. <laughs> you're kind of frisky. I don't seen you. I don't. I don't hear what you talk to some of these guys. You frisky as hell. No. It's a good thing that uh, I'm here to say that. Uh, you know what? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, man, he's too smooth. Too smooth for me. I'm just a mortal, man. Let me live. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're more than that. You're more than that. I don't oh, see your eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, hey, and everybody that's listening in, if y'all enjoyed yourself, please go to the website and uh, check <laughs> everything out that's on the website. And if you want, uh, want to contribute and keep this thing going, because this man is putting a lot of money out. So that we can have this opportunity, donate. Hey, that hey, man, man got plenty of money. Don't yeah, worry about man. that. Don't that man got plenty of money. You talking that, about that man got plenty of money? That ain't the forty dollars a week. All he got to do is don't go trick, and that's forty dollars oh. a week. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. Don't oh, worry about it. He got man. it. He got don't it. Don't worry about business it. out though. Oh, no, shoot. no. I'm saying, don't act like he's some uh, some bomb standing up under a bridge now. God damn it. Oh damn. You go to the strip club, man, Delacan. I don't. Hey, look. Let me, t- let me tell you this. If I went to a strip club, I'm going with seven dollars, not a goddamn penny more. Okay, number one. Okay. Number what two. Do get I don't watch pornography. I don't watch pornography. When would you say something about some cocaine? You no know, good, bitch. Say it again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let me tell you this. I don't watch pornography. I don't masturbate. I don't go to a strip club. You know why? I'm a tell you why. Because I'm sought after I'm sought after from Maine to Florida, Washington State to California. I I choose my picks of the litter. I've been celibate for three years. You don't know that. Oh, but see, man. I can tell you that. And I've been celibate by at my own discretion. At my own discretion. It's pussy all around. Salute me. You. All you day long. Up, Hold on. 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 Don't, don't talk about me. Hold on, we got an unknown caller. I hear the whole run. We got an unknown caller. Unknown caller. Okay, unknown caller. Unknown caller. Wow. Must be the circus because all the clowns are here. <laughs> oh, there's that no good motherfucker. There's that no good father fucker right there. Hey, man, there Delacan, is. ask Uncle Hey, hey man, Delacan, ask Uncle Sam if you could make a phone call long distance to the, to oh, the conference. My. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go to Barbarian get in because I know he got some very important news to tell black people <laughs> in America. And he might do the conference call, too. Black people might do the conference call, too. Let's go to Barbarian yeah. get in. I ain't heard his voice. I know he got some very important information to bring to the people. Go ahead, Joe. We only got about four minutes left. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, Mandela Khan, man. You can't call long distance. God damn. You can't even get a phone that allow you to call long distance. But you're saving the people. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Out of here, man. Once again, you did uh, it again. You brought this uh, great information, and you did be another thing by running that commercial on Mendel Cop. Boy, I tell you, a bad man. I'm so I'm so great that I can get a motherfucker that ain't been online all night. The first thing come out of his mouth with everything going on in this country is Mendel Cop. Boy, that uh, motherfucker want to suck my dick, but I'll tell you, I wouldn't oh, fuck you, hey, and you will never see me. You understand? <laughs> so I don't know why you keep my dick all in your mouth. I will come never on, fuck EP. You. I will never fuck with you. So you might as well get Give my name out your mouth. Quick. I don't like I'm men. Wrong. I like I mean, pussy, Joe. I like okay. pussy. Mandela, I'm going to grab you by the motherfucking hold pussy, Joe. Hold on. Mandela Khan. Call up Sprint. What? No. 
Can you hear me? Brent, what's wrong with you? Who's doing the conference call, sir? Okay, well, I'm going to put this in here. All right, right now, I got it up. You can call on and do it, right? Yeah, you can do that app. And, or you can go on uh, Talk Real Solutions uh, website. Are you writing uh, this Tyrell down? Said the link, so you can do it for free. Hmm? But you got to have Wi-Fi, I assume, though. <laughs> I ain't got... Better do a search for uh, uh, Wi-Fi, Mandela. Mandela Khan, ask Uncle Sam if you're able to get the phone to service right. I'll tell you what. Now you're talking about the east end of a horse's, horse's ass. Here's what I got to tell you. I've already <laughs> opened up my filters, and I'm online where I need to be online. Put restrictions okay. on your phone. Huh. Yeah, Trump's yeah. taking them Obama phones, man, Delacon. You ain't giving up. Yeah, you got really fuck. What's the number? 605-562-3140. Oh, right? God. Uh, yeah. I believe it's 915 That's the part to call again. 605 I'm signed afterwards. Five six two three one four zero. Tell All right, uh, uh, is nine one five four one one pound. The pound sign. Yep. Right. The tic tac toe sign. I could continue yelling and screaming. Uh, Mandela Khan, yeah. you better yell at Uncle Sam and make sure you get your phone right. My phone's right. Angel, Angel lady. lady. Yes, please. <laughs> Was Angel, Angel Lady from the Joshua, deepest part of my heart. You better not call that conference. <laughs> you couldn't call this show, don't call the conference. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder where Chef Dodge and uh, 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 Joshua the Scrambler at. The Scrambler? He probably, uh, Joshua probably protested. <laughs> oh. No, nah, I think Joshua's on here, but he didn't press one. But <laughs> oh. well, well, I know Chef Dodge. Uh, he ain't gonna tell you all the real truth. He probably can cook, but he don't know a goddamn thing about African people. I'm telling you, the motherfucker might be able to cook. I wouldn't taste none of his food, but uh, uh-huh. he may be able to cook. But when it comes to uh, uh, telling what is best for the people, that motherfucker dumb as a goddamn door. But uh, uh-huh. the good thing is that uh, I want some aspirations now, and I'm gonna have to figure out how to get some. But well, first, you need to get a decent phone. <laughs> Hey, man, Delacon, yeah. the only one that yeah. drunk the Kool-Aid and survived. 